Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Would you be the jerk for not wanting to take a DNA test? We'll find out, but first a story from Mean Coconut 541 Am I the jerk for humiliating my wife on social media to defend my mom? We have finally got no contact with my mom. It was a long, hard decision, but she and my wife are just fundamentally unable to get along and recently had a vicious fight, and I knew I had to put my wife first. This fight was so bad, my mom didn't even protest the no contact. We're just done with each other, but I can't say it hasn't been gut-wrenching. My mom's given her version of the story to everyone, so I get my wife wants to defend herself, but I hate that she's posting on social media because I find that tacky, and my mom just told people verbally. Anyway, my wife made a couple posts about my mom's behavior over the years, which, hey, they were true. But then she claimed my mom wore white to our wedding, she didn't, and she posted a picture to prove it. The picture isn't from our wedding, it's from my mom's own wedding, and my wife labeled it the mother-son dance. I was mortified. I don't even care about the white dress. But the man my mom was with was her husband, not me, face was cropped out, and I felt humiliated. He was holding her very intimately, hand on her lower back, her head buried in his chest. My mom and I would never touch like that, and it made me feel ick. Heck, my mom was stiff during the actual mother-son dance. I know some families are more affectionate, but I would just never do that. I asked my wife to take it down, and she refused. I took it into my own hands and commented, Honey, I think you're confused. That's stepdad's name. Remember, that was their wedding. She actually wore green to ours and posted the pictures for proof. My wife was furious and deeply hurt. She broke down crying and said I publicly humiliated her and sided with my mom. She said she just wanted a little bit of petty revenge and I should have taken her side. It's been a day and she's still clearly upset. So I think OP's not the jerk here. I'm not one for the whole misinformation petty revenge attack. Would you guys agree with me when I say, just based off of the reactions here, that maybe the whole disagreement is more a problem generated from the wife and maybe not the mom? Or do you think it's going too far to try to suggest the wife might be the one at fault for all this fighting just based off of how they reacted? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Automatic Effort 2227 Am I the jerk? I told my daughter she can live with me with this condition. I, 34-year-old male, had a child 10 years ago, Nova, 10. I was a terrible person back then. I didn't stay in her life, and I deeply regret it. A few months ago, I contacted her mom to see if I can see my child. She happily agreed to co-parent with me and seemed relieved, which was understandable, considering she had four other kids, all younger than Nova. Nova was a bit distant at first, but now we're doing better. She's generally a very good kid, But something I realized about her is that no punishment seems to work on her. And also, she can be very disrespectful at times. If I tell her to do something as a punishment, she won't do it. Or if I ground her, she'll just leave without my permission. I asked her mom how she punishes her, and she said she's never punished her before. What I've heard from Nova is that it seems like she would just cuss her out and yell at her, which I don't think are good punishments for a kid. Two nights ago, Nova asked me if she can live with me from now on. I told her I'd love it, but she can live with me with one condition. She has to follow my rules and be respectful. She didn't say anything after that. After she went back to her mom's home, my mom, who was there when Nova asked me this, told me I was a jerk because if a kid is asking her deadbeat dad to take her in, there must be something very wrong, so you don't make conditions for her, you just say yes and take her in. Was I really wrong to have this condition? I can't be a parent if she doesn't listen to me. But now both my mom and daughter refuse to talk to me. Her mom will likely have no problem with this. She seems too busy with her other kids. And I think she would like being the weekend fun parent, so that's not really a problem. I think OP is the jerk here because, first of all, they're 10 years old. What kind of rambunctious, disrespectful behavior are you really expecting? Second of all, I think it was wholly unnecessary because the kinds of things OP was asking of a 10 year old kid, it's kind of implied already when you live with a parent. Follow rules and be respectful? Isn't that what kids are supposed to do? That's not something you have to sign up for, that should be expected. And also, it's your 10 year old kid. 
They're turning to you for a reliable place to live, and your first response to your 10-year-old kid is, well, it could work out if you follow some rules. It comes off like you just don't care. This next story is from throwaway6097757. Am I the jerk for calling my husband selfish and saying no to the arrangements he made? I, female 33, have been married to my husband, male 38, for two years. He has a nine-year-old son from his former marriage. He's always been on bad terms with his ex. They had a messy divorce and basically hate each other's guts. It got worse after his ex got remarried. The current problem started when he found out that his ex-wife planned to go on vacation without their son, my stepson. Why? Because her new husband didn't want him to go. Probably because it's a romantic getaway. My husband pitched a fit and insisted they take my stepson, but she refused. My husband then brought him to stay with us. Not his days, but I welcomed him and made sure to keep him entertained and happy. All was good until I found out that my husband has booked tickets for a vacation to the same place his ex and her new husband were going. Same hotel, same everything. He booked the tickets in mine and his son's name only. I was confused. I asked him about it, and he said he did this despite his ex and show her that she can't exclude his son from a vacation and who the better parent is. He told me he's arranged for everything and all I had to do was take time off work and take his son and go. I was shocked and I asked if he was serious and he confirmed it. I went off on him saying I can't just take time off work and go with his son to a place I've never been before just so he could one up his ex. He ranted about how busy he was, otherwise he would have taken care of this himself, but sent me instead. I yelled saying I've got a lot on my plate. I work full time, I take care of my cancer stricken mom, I clean, cook, and take care of my stepson on top of that. He said my boss will understand if I take time off, unlike his, but in response I called him selfish and said no to this arrangement and told him it was final. He flipped his crap on me, then told his son that I just said no to a fun vacation for him funded by his dad. I told him to stop it because I hate commitments and won't risk losing my job over an unexpected vacation. And for what? We just got back from one a month ago. He's been ranting about how I'm wasting his time and money by declining to go and that his son will hate me for this forever. I don't care what this husband thinks, what justification he has. You can't just force a trip upon somebody, especially one that has real serious commitments, and expect them to ever just be truly happy with it. It could be tickets to their dream vacation spot with all expenses included hotel and spa and everything beautiful and they would still be justified to be angry and upset because who has the ability to just drop everything at a dime, take time off work immediately and set sail? The husband absolutely wasted their money and they should feel bad about it. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Next Leadership 2388 Am I the jerk for mocking my annoying co-worker after she'd been in an accident? I have a co-worker, Hannah, who hates the fact that I come to work by car. Every time I mention traffic, parking, or I'm a little late, she goes, Why don't you bike to work instead? Or, should have taken the tram, it's immune to traffic. The bike park has plenty of space, etc. It's incredibly annoying and she always does this. A few days ago, a car turned on Hannah while she was riding her bike to work, and she suffered some very minor injuries. Nothing serious, just a broken arm and a concussion. Our team put together a little present for her, everybody wrote a note, and another co-worker delivered it to Hannah's apartment. My note said, should have come by car. I thought it was a funny joke, but apparently not. It got delivered to her and she told the others, who came to me and called me petty and insensitive and are now acting very cold towards me. I think they're overreacting. It was just a joke. Am I the jerk? I think OP is definitely the jerk. Honestly, if you're trying to joke there, you have to make sure that you are actually that close to that person. Like, just put yourself in her shoes. If you're driving your car and you crash or something accidentally, and they send you a get well note that says, told you you should have used a bike, would that be funny? Would you be laughing? You'd probably want to rip their head off. Also, everybody agrees with me when I say a broken arm and a concussion are not very minor injuries, right? OP was crazy in labeling that, right? A traumatic brain injury? Very minor? 
Our next story is from Impressive PP. Am I the jerk for telling a neighborhood runner I wouldn't leash my dog? We live in country suburbs. Neighborhood is surrounded by farmland. The neighborhood is full of transplants in the tech industry. The neighborhood is brand new, still building houses. We have a golden who is incredibly well trained and walks no more than three feet ahead of us or beside. We were walking towards the fields to play fetch and a man started running towards us. He stops a few feet away and asks us to leash our dogs. We said, no thank you. He said, what if I was afraid of dogs? What if I was allergic? I said, well, then you shouldn't be sprinting towards an unleashed dog. He didn't like that answer and I explained to him that we're essentially in the country and he is trained to be off leash and it's very clear that he would never hurt anybody because he's a stranger who's raising his voice and our dog hasn't reacted whatsoever, sitting pretty by our side. He told me I must be having a bad day. I calmly said, not at all. I told you no, we won't be putting him on a leash and you aren't getting your way. He threatened calling the HOA. I laughed and told him to take my picture while he's at it and I'll give him my address. As a huge dog lover, I've had dogs all my life. I would say confidently OP is the jerk. The bottom line I feel is it doesn't matter how well trained your dog truly is, they should be on a leash when you're outside. They're trained, but they're still an animal. You just don't know if there's going to be one bad day. And especially if something frightening happens, your dog might be very, very well trained to come right back to you. But one crazy thing happens, pandemonium, some wild animal comes chasing and that dog is gone. Bottom line, it might be annoying, but it's just better to put a leash on your dog and walk them around safely. You can get a leash that lets your dog go three feet from you. Just get one of those long, super long, retractable ones if you need. Our next story is from Thunder Deserve 9096 Am I the jerk for not paying to remove well on my property so the neighbor can replace the septic tank? My husband and I would like to get another point of view regarding an issue we're having with our next door neighbor. Little background, we're cordial but not friends. We bought our house 8 years ago. They, maybe 14. They own a construction landscaping company and have trucks and workers coming on our residential street daily. I assume to pick up work orders. Over the years, they've done extensive landscaping to their backyard, using our side yard to get there because they built a huge deck so close to the property line. Absolutely gorgeous landscaping. In the last two years, they started to work on an adjacent side yard, and we noticed they planted small palms in front of our sprinklers. Long story short, they thought they had approximately six to eight more feet than they had. This came to light when they moved our sprinklers over and we said something about them planting in front of them. The neighbor approached husband a few weeks ago that they needed a new septic tank and our unpermitted well was within 50 feet and would need to be moved. Hubby says, we'll move it for you if you pay for it. She says, well, it may be an issue since you don't have a permit. We make a few calls. Our realtor makes a few calls for us to septic co-owner. It's a small town and she tells us that they can apply for a variance. It had to have been permitted, etc, etc. We aren't worried. Neighbor knocks on our door, and hubby and I speak to her. She asks if there's any way we can work with her and her husband because, yes, they can apply for a variance, but it costs $1,800, and there's no guarantee that the county will approve it. She asks if we can just move our well. Hubby says we will if you pay for it. She says she shouldn't have to since we don't have a permit. This is where I may have been a jerk. I did raise my voice and told her we weren't paying for anything. You're trying to make your problem our problem. She said it was our problem because the county now knows we don't have a permit, so they may make us move it. We said we'd talk to some people and we weren't worried, and I again said, your problem, not ours. Stop trying to make it our problem. She said, we may bring legal action. We said, do what you have to do, and slam the door. We found our copy of the permit that the former owners left us, by the way. Her passive-aggressive threat of the permit pissed me off, and I did raise my voice to her. So, am I the jerk for raising my voice to neighbor? Absolutely not the jerk. This person was doing exactly what OP said. They were trying to make it their problem. Honestly, I think the only thing that truly sucks here is they have to live next to a neighbor who's clearly going to be biased and have hatred for them for not spending X amount of hundreds of dollars to move the septic tank for them. If you want your neighbors to move something that costs hundreds so you can continue to do some home improvement crap, 
Well, tough crap, unless you pay for it. This next story is from Gonchian. Am I the jerk for telling my sister it's ridiculous to divorce someone who gave her a fake ring? I, 23-year-old female, have an older sister, 29-year-old female, who's married to my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law seems to genuinely love her, and they've never shown a sign of a failing relationship. That was, of course, until yesterday, when my sister phoned me while crying heavily. I asked her what was wrong, and she told me her friend who was a jeweler was suspicious of the ring my brother-in-law gave to her, and urged her to confirm the material of the ring. My sister continued and told me that the results showed that the ring was not made from diamond, but in fact, moissanite. She told me she didn't tell her husband yet, but she's considering a divorce because she thought that my brother-in-law didn't really love her, even though he has supposedly had enough money. I don't know how much money he has, so as of now I can't really confirm if he did or did not have the money. I told her it was pretty ridiculous to only divorce brother-in-law just because he bought her a fake ring. She sarcastically told me something along the lines of, thanks for being so helpful, before hanging up. I get she was in an emotional moment, but love shouldn't revolve around a ring. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk here. I think honestly for the brother-in-law, it might be for the best that they get a divorce. Because clearly their love is not based on true love. You didn't get me a real diamond? Well, I'm divorcing you. The only thing that sucks there is they're probably going to try to take half the money that brother-in-law does have. This next story is from Easy and Free. Am I the jerk for asking my parents and in-laws to leave our wedding early? I officially tied the knot last week. Not sure how, but I convinced the coolest guy in the world that I'm tolerable enough to tie down for life. Super shocking. Thankfully, everyone accommodated the fact that we didn't want children present at our ceremony or reception. The thing that did receive some pushback was our request that unless you were explicitly invited to stay, then everyone needed to be out of the reception venue by 7 p.m. Those who were asked to stay were mostly just mine and my husband's friends. As much as I love my parents, siblings, and new in-laws, I did want to partake in a few adult substances and wasn't really interested in them bearing witness to poppers and other things getting passed around. We'd been with them all day and would be seeing them the next morning as all of us were staying at a place nearby and had plans to grab breakfast together, so I didn't see it as a problem. At that point, I'd already had a few drinks, so after some back and forth about whether they really had to head out, I basically said something to the effect of, if you wouldn't feel comfortable spending a night out with us at a gay bar, you should probably leave. The space cleared out pretty quickly after that, and we did our thing with our friends. It was a wonderful end to a wonderful night. My dad, however, didn't show up for breakfast the next morning, and my sister tipped me off that my mom and my mother-in-law weren't happy with my comments. Am I the jerk? I mean, I'm all for you having the wedding of your dreams and whatnot, but I just feel like it's a weird process to kick everybody out and essentially make all these people feel like they're not close enough to you or not important enough to hang around. And frankly, the comments were a bit weird. Basically telling everybody at the wedding, sorry, you didn't make it on the VIP list, kick rocks. Kind of painful for a lot of people, I bet. Imagine telling your mom and dad on your wedding day to go home early, essentially. Our next story is from OK Tutor 2934 Am I the jerk for being pissed that my dad brung his husband on our family trip? I'm 15-year-old female. My dad, 54-year-old male, is married to Jacob, 50-year-old male. And to be honest, I don't like Jacob as he just annoys me. I don't know if they intentionally do what they do or if they don't even realize that they're doing it. But either way, it pisses me off, which is why I dislike Jacob very much. I can never get alone time with just my mom and my dad without Jacob being there. And I've specifically said all the time that I just want my dad and my mom there, but it doesn't even matter to them because Jacob turns up either way. And yes, I've communicated with them about this, but it's like they don't even listen. Anyways, yesterday was supposed to be only me, my mom, and my dad going to an amusement park. But also my half-sister, three-year-old female, my mom's daughter. I told my dad and Jacob that I didn't want Jacob there, but guess what? He turned up anyways. Also, this event was for me, and it wasn't an event that was for the whole family. It was for me, and I wanted my sister, my mom, and my dad to be there only. I was pissed when Jacob turned up, 
So instead of letting it go like I normally do, I lashed out at my dad and Jacob for Jacob being there. I told my dad that Jacob didn't always need to come along and that he needed to stop bringing Jacob to my events that I specifically said I didn't want him to attend. My dad was poised and Jacob started crying which only made me more mad. Jacob is a grown man and I talked to him about this as well. So it's not like he was just clueless to the whole thing. So I didn't understand why he was crying and maybe I was a bit harsh when I lashed out but because I've been gentle with this many, many times, and I was just done with being gentle with them, I lashed out. Now, to mention, my mom is the one paying for all this, so she was also pissed that Jacob turned up when he wasn't even supposed to be there. I never see my dad without Jacob being there, and it just gets so tiring when you can't even talk to your dad alone with his husband slash wife being there. My mom and family are completely on my side, but my dad and Jacob are pissed at me. So, am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. I don't blame OP for wanting to have one-on-one time with just their dad, or a group moment with just their actual parents. The problem here is because Jacob is being so insistent on always being there, There's never been any time for OP to build up that feeling that they're satisfied with how much one-on-one time they've gotten with their dad. So this has only created more and more discontent and I feel like it's hard to fix at this point. Jacob needs to give the 15-year-old girl some space and let them have some one-on-one time with their dad. This next story is from Please Don't Spend FXH. Am I the jerk for not wanting to take a DNA test? I'm 32-year-old female. My dad passed away when I was a wee baby. He was in a car accident with his pregnant female subordinate, who was also his longtime mistress. She did survive the crash, but lost the baby and ended up in an almost vegetative state. She's still alive. My parents had me after eight years of marriage, after dealing with years of infertility. My dad was rich. He came from old money and, while married to my mother, created his own fortune. My mom came from humble beginnings. They had an arranged marriage. While they were married, my dad was in charge of the finances, and when he died, everything went to my mom. She married my dad's younger brother a few years later and had my siblings. They're still happily married. We had a very happy childhood, and my grandparents, dad's parents who have since passed, were very involved. I had an extremely privileged upbringing. Now, here's where I might be the jerk. A girl claiming to be my half-sister, my dad's mistress's daughter, has contacted me saying that her mom is on her last legs and that she's trying to get some money for the hospital bills. She's two years older than me and claims that she's my dad's daughter and is entitled to my family's money. I have refused to take a DNA test. She's now threatened to take me to court. I refuse to meet her or discuss this issue. Her family's now harassing me about it and they tell me that I'm trying to steal her money and that she's my dad's firstborn child. When I told my mom about this, She told me to ignore her and go on with my life. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. It's honestly not their responsibility to take this DNA test. And frankly, if they don't want to help out somebody who they haven't known their whole life, they don't have any responsibility to do that. Even if they were OP's father's kid, all of that money still would have gone to OP's mom. It wouldn't have like piggy jumped their spouse and gone straight to a kid. But it wouldn't hurt to get some legal advice just in case. Our next story is from Life Percentage 5567. Am I the jerk for writing up an employee who catfished me? I'm a manager in a work environment that's rather casual, where employees get close and spend a lot of time together outside of work. I'm a little traditional when it comes to employer slash employee relationships. So while I do participate in some activities to build morale and camaraderie, i.e. happy hours after work, attending weddings if I'm invited, etc., I do not participate in social activities where things might get out of hand, i.e. going to concerts, clubbing, just going to someone's house to hang out, etc. This is a personal policy that I also extend to social media, where I keep my profiles private and I don't add or accept employees on all platforms. I just like to keep things private and don't want them to see where I spend my time, who I'm dating, etc. Recently a new hire asked me for my account and I kindly let her know that I'd like to keep things private. I thought that was it, but she went ahead and made a fake account to follow me, going as far as to post fake photos and write a fake bio to look like we went to college together. 
I found out because after I accepted her, she took screenshots of my photos and shared them to other colleagues. Thankfully there wasn't anything off base on my accounts, but she did share photos of a new boyfriend I haven't introduced yet, as well as photos of a new designer bag I purchased and jokingly asked everyone if he was my sugar daddy. It was a huge breach of my privacy. Her comments also embarrassed me, and I ended up writing her up, which is a semi-serious offense at our workplace that can lead to termination. Since then, it's caused a huge drama at work, with some employees thinking that I can't take a joke and that I was taking things too far, while others came to support me. I hate that it split up the team. Upper management supports my decision, but some employees have mentioned that I could have just verbally warned her first and that it was my own fault for falling for her catfish. Am I the jerk? I think OP's clearly not the jerk here, and this isn't something that you laugh off or give a verbal warning for. They literally went behind your back to lie to you as to who they are so they can peer into your personal life and try to invade on you. That's not something you tolerate. You slap down a write-up because that is not okay. You don't pry into someone's life just because you're curious and then also show their photos around and joke about having a sugar daddy and embarrassing them. As a person that enjoys their privacy, what that coworker did is ridiculous. This next story is from Mucker113. Am I the jerk for asking my wife to work after I told her she didn't have to 16 years ago? We got married in 06. We had three kids in three years following and I stated to her that she can raise the kids while I work. Now the kids are 10, 14, and 15, and in school from 8am to 3.30pm daily, so I asked her to get a part-time job to assist with a couple of our bills. She went off on me stating I lied when I said she could be a stay-at-home mom when we got married, and her family and mine are agreeing with her, but I said it's getting to be a mental strain on me financially. Since I've taken two pay cuts at work and don't have the luxury of looking for new employment, I've even started doing food deliveries on the weekends just to keep the two older kids in sports programs. And when my youngest asked to do gymnastics and I saw the cost, I said I can't without sacrificing other required bills. And now she says if I can't afford a family, why did I get married? I'm just at a loss as to what to do. I work from home and even offered my wife a job with me part time while the kids are in school just to answer a few of my calls and transfer them appropriately to the departments they need. My family stated that I told her she doesn't have to work, but our needs have changed since the kids require so much more money now than they did when they were younger. And now my wife hasn't spoken to me in two weeks and both sides of the family agree with her. Yeah, it sucks that 16 years ago, also 2006 being 16 years ago hurts me to hear, but it sucks that 16 years ago you said, oh, you're going to be a stay-at-home mom, you won't have to lift a finger besides around the house and with the kids. But stuff changes. Is this a marriage? Why is the wife just tearing down OP for admitting that they need more help? This doesn't seem like a partnership to me. She'd rather brutally put down OP than just try and make their kids' lives better. I fear that they're just going to drive OP to a breaking point, and if they just give up, what's going to happen? I hope both sides of the family that are saying OP's the total jerk and is in the wrong here are going to be willing to pitch in for that entire family. And our final story of the day is from Healthy Escape 1802 Am I the jerk for not wanting my atheist friend to be religious around me? This sounds strange, but I, 17-year-old female, have found a job recently and I've quickly become friends with one of my co-workers, 19-year-old female, Amy. I'm Muslim, but my family aren't very strict Muslims and neither am I. Amy knows I'm Muslim and knows about some of the general rules and stuff, some of which I don't follow. Lately, Amy's been calling me out on things I do, saying that it's against my religion. I did tell her that I'm not a strict Muslim, but it hasn't stopped her. Normally, I wear jeans and hoodies to work but since it's been warm, I wore a skirt, and Amy pointed out that I should be covering my legs more, but I just rolled my eyes. And then she saw me eating M&Ms, which are mostly not halal, so she told me to stop eating them. I didn't, and I told her that I wanted her to stop policing me. Even my parents don't say this stuff to me. She said that she's just helping me practice my religion, so I told her that she should just practice it if she's gonna keep correcting me. She told one of our other co-workers who says that I was in the wrong because I was being rude after she tried to help me. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here because they never asked for any help. 
Maybe OP should turn it around on them. The next time Amy says something like, God, I wish my shift was over, OP should say, well, actually, you're atheist, so you don't even believe in it, so why are you saying that? You know, pick and prod at them to be a better atheist. Maybe they'll realize it's kind of ridiculous. Am I the jerk for kicking my husband's mom out after she threw out the dinner I cooked? Last night, my husband's mom came over at 7 p.m. I just got done making dinner by the time she arrived to the house. I welcomed and greeted her, then went upstairs to take a shower. My husband had to finish some work in his office and then sit with her in the living room. 20 minutes later, I got out of the shower and rushed into the kitchen. I was so confused to see my pot not on the stove and another pot put in its place. My husband's mom was sitting in the living room. I approached her to ask about it and she said that the pot that I left cooking on the stove got burnt so she thought I must have forgotten to turn off the stove, resulting in the food getting burned, so she threw it out and made us dinner. I was shocked. I went and dug through the trash, and as I'd expected, the food was not burned. In fact, it still wasn't cooked. The meat was still raw. So apparently she threw it out for no reason? I lost my ever-loving crap on her because this isn't the first time, not the second time, but the third time she'd had done this. Now, y'all telling me that this is a coincidence, but I don't think so. I yelled at her, saying that she never should have touched my dinner that I spent time and effort making, and then lie about why she threw it out just because she hates my cooking. My husband got involved and told me to take it easy because his mom meant well. I said no, she didn't think, told her to leave my house right there and then. She argued, then took her purse and left. My husband blew up saying he couldn't believe I kicked his mom out for literally cooking us dinner. I said that there was already dinner cooking, but she threw it out and it wasn't even burned. He called me unhinged, then went upstairs and then had the whole dinner his mom cooked for himself. I ended up eating yogurt and dates for dinner, which was awful because I was starving. My husband's upset because of me kicking her out and says that I punished her over a misunderstanding. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. Usually, I think when you say, don't mess with somebody's food, you're usually referring to putting something in the food or spoiling it intentionally. But I think it also applies to don't go and toss somebody else's food that they're currently cooking out. Let's say you had a relative or a friend over and you were cooking a meal for yourself and you stepped away, they threw out your meal and started cooking something entirely different. Would you kick that friend and or relative out of your house? Just a hard argument? Just go along with it? Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. Our next story is from throwaway468692. Am I the jerk for asking my daughter to leave? I divorced my ex-wife five years ago. Together we have a daughter, 14 year old female, and I have full custody. A few months ago, my daughter started this new habit that whenever we have an argument, she would yell at me, tell me she hates me, and would rather go and live with her mom. She hates her mom, so I know that she's only saying it to make me angry, but it started to get very annoying. So three days ago when we had an argument again, and she said she doesn't want to live with me anymore, and she'd rather live with her mom, I told her to call her mom or someone else and tell them to take her, because if this is really what she wants, then I won't stop her. She seemed surprised and apologized and said she doesn't want to go, but I said she has to go. A few minutes later, my sister called me and said my daughter's asked to take her and asked me if I'd really kicked my daughter out. I told her I did and asked her to come and take her. She showed up at my home an hour later and took my daughter. Last night, my daughter called me and apologized again and asked me if she can come home now. I told her I love her, but no, this is what she wanted. My sister called me after that and called me a cruel jerk and said my daughter is crying because of me. My original plan was to let her stay there for a week. I thought it would be a good punishment for her, but now I'm not so sure. I remembered the sub and decided to ask for some judgment, so am I the jerk? No, I'm not a parent and I'm not necessarily saying that I know best. I would say OP is a jerk right up until the daughter apologized for the second time at the sister's house and they said no to them coming back. Considering that was their second apology and they were already over there at their sister's house, I feel like they sufficiently learned their lesson. And I feel like it's just kind of grinding it into the dirt, forcing them to stay there for even longer when they're already clearly upset and apologizing and realizing that you're not going to deal with their attempt at manipulation. Our next story is from PowerfulAd2907. Am I the jerk for 
taking my daughter's career for her. My daughter, 17-year-old female, has always been a smart girl. She has a huge potential future available for her. She has the ability to become one of the greatest data scientists ever. It's an incredibly rewarding job for her, especially since technology is the way to go for the future and the country we live in is expensive. As a computer scientist myself, I've always loved my job. However, she doesn't want to be one. I've been influencing her since she was 10. She was initially excited but doesn't want to anymore. She took two tech classes in grades 9 and 10, and she isn't taking one in 11th or 12th grade. She says that she wants to be a psychologist and now wants to have a business major. I don't think it's a right fit for her. The former because she doesn't have the social skills needed to become a psychologist. She's autistic. Heck, she couldn't handle her brothers well. How's she supposed to deal with adults with psychological issues? The latter as well because it involves dealing with people that can be immature as well. Also, she took a business course in grade 10, and she ended up not liking it, so why would she take an entire university program? Yesterday we sat down, and were looking at potential programs. She picked a few from Bachelor of Commerce programs. I tried pushing her to pick the Bachelor of Computer Science programs. At the end, she asked if I would support her, no matter what she picks. I laughed at her and told her not to give me a scare. So it's a no then, she asked. I told her that she can take her highlighter, highlight the programs she's interested in, and we can discuss. She said that I criticize every program that isn't tech related. I tried convincing her that the tech field is a very rewarding field, and she's smart and capable. And then she snapped. She said that she doesn't care if it's a gold mine and she's capable enough to handle it. She hates the computer tech field, and I've been forcing her to do it for a long time. She says it's her future, not mine, and not everyone wants to be a tech scientist. She asked how I feel if my father tried to push me to the law field, since it's a rewarding job despite me having no interest in social sciences. Then she stormed out. At that point, I realized that I may have pushed her too hard. I just want her to have a bright future and no struggles, but I guess I went about it the wrong way. I think it's safe to say here that OP is the jerk and I think they've got some blinders on as far as what the right thing is for their own kid. I actually appreciate how much OP wants a great future for their kid and while it may seem like a surefire thing to go into the tech field, it's not what they want to do. You have one go around with things and even though they're 17 and still have a long time to really figure it out, I say let them pursue what they're excited about especially if they can make a career out of it. And not only let them, but support them in it. Do you know how discouraging it is for them to straight up ask you, can I share what I'm excited about or am interested in, and to be essentially told pretty much no unless it's tech related? You're setting your daughter up to never want to open up to you ever. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Every video has awesome stories, like our next story from Super Pant Man. Am I the jerk for refusing to sleep in Sailor Moon bed sheets? Background, I, male 29, have been married to my wife, female 28, for 5 years. And we have a child together, female 2. She does all the housework. Occasionally I might lend a hand, but she cleans, cooks, and all those good things. I frequently tell my wife I'm grateful for her hard work and she decorates the house as she sees fit, mainly in pink, and I don't have a say in this, nor do I particularly care. We have a lovely home which is in no way because of my input. She takes pride in our bed and often buys new bedding with various patterns or themes. Normally this bedding is pink, which I don't particularly like, but I wouldn't complain. She recently bought Sailor Moon bedding. I'm no hardcore anime person, but isn't this anime for 13 year old girls? I'm to sleep in bedding with these stupid princess pictures and rabbits and cats on it? I feel like a line has to be drawn somewhere. I asked her how she would feel if I bought Thomas the Tank Engine bedding, but she said it isn't the same. I got quite angry about it. My dad would roll in his grave if he knew I was sleeping in little girls bedding. She put the bedding on anyway, and I'm threatening to sleep downstairs until it's removed. She's angry and says I'm being childish. I think OP is the jerk, and I think they are being childish. I'll be honest, Sailor Moon bedsheets is no high class, 
thousand thread count silk whatever amazingness you wouldn't let somebody who you were trying to make a first impression on see it necessarily but beyond that who cares I personally believe in being able to celebrate the things you like, whether that's posters, whether that's bed sheets. Unless sleeping in those sheets is going to make OP's you know what fall off, like it sounds like they're kinda scared it might, then maybe they should look into putting a little bit more effort around the house and next time changing the sheets to something they like. Then it wouldn't be an issue at all, you know, considering OP only occasionally might lend a hand. This next story is by Jaded Lunch 5357 Am I the jerk for grounding my daughter? My 38-year-old male, daughter, 16-year-old female, lives with me full-time. I got married last year to my now-wife Suze, 35-year-old female. We dated for five years, but she always clashed with my daughter Anna because of their personalities. Anna is a good kid, responsible, kind, and helps around, but she's overall an introvert who doesn't like to be around people that much and enjoys her time alone in her room, while Suze is the opposite. She loves socializing, doing stuff with the people she loves, etc. She always invites Anna to help her cook and bake, do some gardening, etc., since they're both at home most of the time. But Anna always says no. Suze has ADHD. Anna is always telling Suze off because she thinks she overwhelms her with her constant need to be around her, because Suze tends to knock at her door too much. She sometimes barges and she feels she forces her to spend time together because if Anna's in the living room, the kitchen, or the garden reading, Suze just sits next to her and starts to talk and then gets sad because she doesn't like to be around her. We've attended family therapy and Anna is doing her solo sessions. I've also talked to Suze that Anna's privacy and solo time should be respected. But I don't think it's a good thing that Anna refuses any kind of contact with Suze. And I don't think she's even trying at all. Anna's explained to me that being around Suze tires her quicker than any other person. Because she knows my wife wishes she were more expressive and talkative and makes her uncomfortable. Yesterday I came home early and I overheard Anna yelling at Suze to get out of her room. I went to see what was happening and Anna was pushing Suze out. She said that Suze just knocked and let herself in, like she always does, while she was getting dressed. Suze was apologizing and saying that she forgot the rule, but Anna said she's tired and that dealing with Suze is worse than dealing with a small kid. This made Suze cry and I said that it wasn't nice of her and I grounded her with a week with no phone. She's not talking to me right now and I wonder if it was wrong because she's never given me the cold shoulder. I think OP is the jerk here. As somebody who is definitely an introvert and can relate to Anna, the problem is here that Suze tires her out because of how often Suze is encroaching in their space. I think Anna doesn't have any incentive to try and make things work because there is just never enough time where Anna can be alone without being interrupted in some form. Whether it's knocking on the door, sitting near them, trying to engage in a conversation. Think of it as like, literally like a battery that they have to recharge. And Suze being somebody that's been so insistent on trying to engage them and being around them so often is like an appliance that charges really hard on the battery. It's to the point where when Suze just knocks on the door or tries to talk to them, it's like the battery just goes right back down to zero and it's got to build its way back up. They just aren't given enough time to fully recharge that battery and so there's no incentive to be kind or to try to engage in anything because it just sucks for Anna. Let's not forget to mention that they walked in on them changing too and then they got grounded for a week for being upset by that. Our next story is from throwaway82354. Am I the jerk for stealing my brother's spotlight by telling a girl I was gay? I, 20, straight male, have a younger brother, 18 year old male. We're pretty close and a few years ago, he told me he's gay. He hasn't told our parents because we were unsure of how they would react. There's a girl, Lisa, 19 year old female, who lives down the road from us and she's had a thing for me for several years. I didn't mind at first, but since she finished school, she's been giving me more and more attention. She's very loud and giggly and obnoxious and I'm not interested. She has a vegetable garden and often comes to our house with whatever she's grown that week. She somehow always seems to come around when I'm home alone. We have a pool in our back garden that she often comes around to use as well. 
I haven't responded to any of her flirting, but she also hasn't made any real move, so I never rejected her properly until last week. I got fed up and told her to back off and leave me alone. She wouldn't really, kept saying I just had to give her a chance and take her out, and that I should see her in her new bikini. I snapped and told her I'm gay to get her to back off. That seemed to work, but a couple of days later, when my parents, brother, and I are all in the lounge together, my mom says that we need to have a conversation. She tells me that Lisa told her I was gay, and that her and my dad fully support that. They both said they were proud of me and gave me hugs. I tried to say that I wasn't gay, but they wouldn't listen. Meanwhile, my brother got upset and went to his room. I went to check on him an hour or so later, and he cried and yelled about how he should have been the one to have this chat with our parents, and I had ruined his coming out. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP can be the jerk in this situation because they didn't intend for any of that to work out the way it did. There was no malice, no ill intent, they were just trying to get somebody who could not get the memo to get off their back. Wasn't maybe a poorer choice than just straight up saying that they're not interested and to leave them alone? Probably, but I don't think that makes them the jerk. Our next story is from HHILABCNE. Am I the jerk for refusing to accept my niece's Mother's Day card? I, 24-year-old female, am child-free. My entire family's fully aware of that. My parents always wanted grandchildren, and my sisters already popped out too, so fortunately they never gave me much grief for my choice. In fact, they've been as supportive as they could be. This incident happened months ago on Mother's Day, but the topic has recently come up again. On Mother's Day lunch, my five-year-old niece gave cards to each female member of the family. My sister, her mom, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, her grandma, and me. My card had, to the best Annie, that's what she calls me, ever, happy Mother's Day. Obviously, she didn't make the card herself, and my sister had a hand in this, I really think this was a jab to the fact that I don't have children, so I politely refused the card, saying that I'm not your mom and you can give me a card like that on my birthday. She looked a bit upset like she was about to turn on the waterworks, but her mom said something to her and she shut up. I felt a bit bad because it wasn't my niece's fault that her mom used a Mother's Day card as a weapon against my choices and was about to say something when the food arrived and she quickly cheered up. My birthday was yesterday, and my niece gave me a card saying, Happy birthday, Annie. I joked to my sister that this time it looks like a real heartfelt card, instead of a backhanded jibe at me. My sister pretended to look confused, and then I reminded her about the Mother's Day card incident. She got mad and said, Oh yeah, the card you made my daughter cry over. I'm sorry your niece loves you so much that she spent her time making a Mother's Day card for you. I told her she wasn't fooling anyone and there was no need to give me a Mother's Day card. It was also sexist to give every woman a Mother's Day card, even women who weren't moms. She told me that her daughter had done the same for all the male relatives on Father's Day too. But I think that's besides the point, as all the men in my family are fathers already. She also said that Mother's Day also applies to loving aunts. Am I the jerk? I think OP is way too strung up on some like greater meaning thing. Whether or not it was motivated or spurred on by the mom, just accept the kid's card. They're a five year old and they're wanting to give you a card and I assume get a nice reaction. If anything, just do it for the kid and then toss the card out later if it really bothers you that much or call out the mom privately if it bothers you that much. This next story is from Goth Mom Life. Am I the jerk for going after my sister-in-law after she broke a rule? I'm 24-year-old female, a new mom of a 3-month-old baby girl. My husband, 31-year-old male, and I have rules that my family has to follow. The big rule is no social media rule. I believe in privacy for my daughter. I don't want any photos of my daughter on social media, especially when I didn't even post photos of her on social media. Don't get me wrong, I've taken many photos of her, but none are posted on social media. Three weeks ago, I asked my sister-in-law, 35-year-old female, to babysit my daughter because my grandmother got sick and it landed her in the hospital in the next state over. Since there wasn't anyone under two years old allowed on the floor, I couldn't take my daughter to see her. After a few days, I went on Facebook and saw my daughter's photo with the caption, First Facebook photo of my niece, is she adorable? I saw red. 
I called her and demanded that she delete the photo and how she'll never babysit my daughter ever again. My husband and I went home. I picked up my daughter and she told me how dumb it was for having that rule. She told me how I don't love my daughter enough to post about her. We argue and my husband took us home. She made a huge post about how she isn't deleting the photo and how horrible I am as a mother. Lastly called me a jerk for yelling at her over a photo. My in-laws are on her side and saying I overreacted. Now my husband's not speaking to his sister. Am I the jerk and overreacted? OP is definitely not the jerk here, and I think it's very telling about just kind of the general psyche of a lot of people in the modern era. You don't love your daughter enough, that's why you don't post her on social media. Yeah, well I also love Oreos. I'm not gonna post a picture of those every time I have some. I honestly just don't really vibe with the whole concept that your whole life has to be online and out there and shared with everybody. If you do that and that's something you love and enjoy, that's awesome. But some people prefer a private, non-internet searchable life. I would try reporting that Facebook photo and hopefully they would want to do something about it. This next story is from Majestic Lavishness 36 Am I the jerk for telling my sister that her just being a girlfriend and an actual wife are actually not the same thing? My sister's been dating this guy Josh for around 7 years now with seemingly no intent to get married. My sister is one of those people who believe marriage is a scam and doesn't desire it at all, and is fine with just being a girlfriend with her boyfriend. Multiple times, me and my parents have tried explaining to her how getting married is not just about wearing a wedding dress and all, and that there's legal advantages and perks that she won't be able to have if she's unmarried. She said there's solutions to that, and marriage is not a wish, neither for her nor Josh. We are deeply conservative and religious, and take marriage seriously. So when I had my wedding a few months ago, I didn't invite Josh because he's not officially tied to my sister. I told her she can have her views on marriage, and I can have mine, and if she wants me to respect her decisions and views, she has to respect mine too, and I'm uncomfortable inviting couples who are neither engaged nor married to my wedding. She held it against us for all these months, only attended the ceremony and stayed at the reception for half an hour at most and then left. She was basically absent from my wedding. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, she got into an accident and was hospitalized for a few days. The hospital had a strict, close relatives only policy, and basically only my parents could visit my sister as first degree relatives. Josh couldn't see her, and she was mad they wouldn't allow him. She was out of the hospital soon after with no serious injuries, but I used what happened as an opportunity to teach my sister why her being a little girlfriend is way different to being a wife, and if her and Josh were actually married, he wouldn't have to miss out on visiting her in the hospital, so his lack of visitation is their fault. My sister now believes I'm the jerk for using her accident to teach her a lesson, but I don't believe I am since maybe this could be a wake-up call for the both of them. I think OP is a major jerk here. Frankly, I don't see why they care so much why their sister does or does not want to get married. And I think OP can go toting that it's their religion and their views as to why they didn't invite Josh to the wedding. But personally, I kind of sense from the way OP's writing this that there was probably some more petty motivation going on there. Now admittedly, I'm not all caught up on the ins and outs of Christianity. But actually, I've never heard the concept of not inviting a boyfriend or a girlfriend, especially one of seven years, and only inviting partners who are married and or engaged. I guess when OP says that they're deeply conservative, they are deeply conservative. It's kind of funny that OP says, if she wants me to respect her decisions and views, she has to respect mine in regards to not inviting Josh to her wedding. But then OP at no point ever respects her decisions anyways. How dare OP's sister not follow OP's deeply religious views? Our next story is from Spare Room Throwaway. Am I the jerk for starting a house project without discussing it with my wife? My wife Amy, 27-year-old female, and I, 27-year-old male, have a spare room in our home. We've gone back and forth since we moved in two plus years ago about what we wanted to do with it but we never took the initiative to actually implement any of these plans. We already have a sufficient number of guest rooms and an office, so the room just sits there unutilized. 
I'm not that worried about it, but my wife brings it up now and then. These mentions are just of the unused room itself, not anything concrete she actually wants to use it for. I made a new friend, Ben, 30-year-old male, about 8 months ago, and it was very much one of those we connected from the first time we spoke to each other situations. I've actually never had that many close male friends, so this connection is especially important to me. The conversation flowed so easily, we had loads in common. I didn't think such a huge amount of genuine love and respect for a person could be developed in less than a year, but it's been very cool to experience that and get to know them. One of the things that we bonded over was a similar love for art and music. Ben is way, way more talented than I am when it comes to painting, but it's something we both enjoy. His birthday's coming up soon, and I thought on top of what else I was getting him, I could turn the spare room into something similar to an art studio for both of us to use. I already ordered a few things for it and was getting ready to jump into painting the walls when my wife came in and demanded to know what I was doing. I explained that I was finally fixing up the spare room. She said it was unacceptable that I had done this without confirming with her that it had been okay. But I didn't think I would need to since it's been two years and the room has basically never been touched. Am I the jerk? My only question is, is whose name is on the house? Yes, it went two years without being touched, but if you're gonna finally do something with the room, you'll wanna run it by your partner who also, I assume, owns the house. Especially considering OP said they went back and forth about what they wanted to do with it, they just never got around to it. Our next story is from Dry Basil 9692 Am I the jerk for telling my husband that I refuse to attend our family vacation if his mother attends? My husband, 32-year-old male, and I, 30-year-old female, have been married for six years. We have two daughters, three and nine months old. My mother-in-law has always held a grudge against me for stealing my husband from her, since he's the youngest and was always a mama's boy. When my kids were born, she held the same grudge and refuses to touch my kids. But when my husband's older sister proposed the idea for both my family and hers to go on a family vacation to Hawaii, my mother-in-law gets very upset and says that we're leaving her out. She's always been super supportive of my sister-in-law's husband and kids, but my sister-in-law is very supportive of me and my children, and she knew that I wouldn't want her mother there. When my husband heard how distraught his mom was over not getting an invite, He decided to take matters into his own hands and invite his mom without asking anyone. I don't understand why he would want her to come if she was just going to continue to disrespect our family. When he finally told us what he did, I freak out and say that if he wants his mom there and he wants to invite his mom, that's totally fine. He just needs to understand that I will not attend nor bring my kids because I don't want our fun family vacation to turn toxic. I gave him the ultimatum his mother, or his wife, and children. He chose his mother and said that she raised him and she deserves to be invited. So, am I the jerk for telling my husband that me and my children would not be attending since his mother was going? I think OP's not the jerk, and I think it's a very reasonable ultimatum. It's not a vacation if you're going to be stressed and not enjoying any moment of it. Might as well skip the drama that's inevitably going to happen, because this mother-in-law can't control themselves. And our final story of the day is from Low Budget Chimp. Am I the jerk for not realizing that little people meant children? Okay, this sounds stupid as heck, but it's driving me nuts. I recently got a job at a climbing gym. We have bouldering and ropes. I got a call from a lady asking if it was appropriate for a group of little people. Now, I assumed she meant, you know, people with dwarfism, short statured people, etc. It's not like we have a policy for that, but I know people with some forms of dwarfism might have issues with their bones or joints or whatever, so I tell her it should be okay, but all climbing is at your own risk. So if they have any medical issues, they should ask their doctor. Well, the day of their booking comes around, and it turns out the little people are actually like a dozen small children. This was a freaking disaster because there is a strict two kids per one adult ratio for kids in the gym. And also kids aren't allowed to belay until they've been assessed. So we pretty much had to tell them that they couldn't come inside. The lady goes off on me for ruining their weekend and I have to get my manager to bail me out. 
after which he laughs his butt off but also calls me an idiot for not understanding that she was talking about kids. Who the freak refers to children as little people? Was I really supposed to anticipate that this woman's use of an extremely specific term actually referred to another group of people entirely? Help me out here Reddit, am I the jerk slash idiot? OP, I think you're not the jerk and I think you're not the idiot. I would think the same thing. I would imagine when you say little people, especially a group of little people, I would imagine you're talking about exactly what OP thought, people with dwarfism or some other kind of short-statured condition. Now, I have heard the term little people be referred to children, but it was like on like some signage or something, like a cutesy thing that you would be able to identify with your eyes. It's just a very, very informal term that you can't just ask somebody and rely that they understand what you mean. If you usually watch me on Spotify, you might have noticed that the story time you were watching was deleted. No clue what happened, but if you click the link in the description, you can listen to the updated podcast. Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Today we've got a lot of hard hitting questions to ponder, but first, a story from Birder Throwaway. Am I the jerk for making my boyfriend eat fast food for a week? My boyfriend grew up in a house that valued outdated gender norms. The women were always responsible for cooking and cleaning, so he didn't learn how to do any of that for most of his life. That is, until he moved in with me after college. He's been good about a few things. He doesn't mind helping with the dishes or handling the laundry, but the one thing I can't seem to get him to do is learn how to cook. The only thing he can do is microwave frozen meals. I've been trying to teach him the basics, but it seems like it goes through one ear and just comes out the other. He still can't turn on the oven or use the stove without help. The toaster is too complicated for him to use, he claims doesn't know how to boil eggs, cook rice, or even how to measure out ingredients using cups. I just don't understand why he can't grasp this, but is fine with other things. Here's the part where I may be a jerk. I went on a trip two weeks ago for work. I'm in charge of buying groceries, we have separate accounts, and I realized how expensive his frozen meals actually are. Three to four dollars for each. I said screw it and bought the easiest ingredients I could find for a lot cheaper for him to cook on his own. He doesn't like leftovers, so me cooking ahead for him was out. Before I left, I sat him down once again and gave him a very long lesson on using the oven, toaster, and stove, as well as how to boil and scramble eggs, toast a piece of toast, boil rice and noodles, and heat up pasta sauce. I also taught him how to pan fry things like onions and other veggies, and how to tell when they were ready. In case he doesn't want to cook both lunch and dinner, I also bought things to make salads and fixings for sandwiches. I come back a week later and he's angry. He claims I practically left him to starve and how I know he has trouble cooking. I retaliate saying that I showed him what to do and I get a whole range of excuses. Setting the oven and stove temp is too complicated. He cut his finger chopping onions and couldn't chop any until his cut healed. He only likes the salad kits so everything is balanced. Apparently he only ate sandwiches, canned goods, and fast food for a week. He thinks I'm a major jerk for not telling him I'm not buying his frozen meals and leaving him alone to fend for himself. On one hand, I do think it was crappy of me not to tell him I didn't buy his meals, and as someone who grew up in a home, pretty much only boiled hot dogs and veggies, and only properly learned how to cook after moving out, I do feel for him. But at the same time, after a few months of not getting the simplest concepts, I'm left feeling partially justified in my actions. So Reddit, am I the jerk? So I'm not going to pretend like I know how to cook. I know very, very little on how to actually cook. I do know one thing though, it is insanely easy to use the toaster. How can you not use a toaster? You literally have one job and that's just to watch it and stop it before it gets too cooked. You can literally sit there for three minutes tops, just popping it back up and restarting it until it's good enough. Would you guys agree with me when I say that this isn't a person who doesn't know how to cook? That this is actually a person that refuses to put any effort in in anything whatsoever relating to cooking? And that if you have to say that you can't even use a toaster, that literally just exposes you for not even trying? That this guy's just looking for an easy way to say, nope, can't do it, sorry, do it all for me? Let me know if you guys agree with me in the comments down below. Our next story is from your cat's BFF. 
Am I the jerk for wanting to make my boyfriend homeless because of my lunch habits? Alex, male 30, and I, female 33, got together in late 2019 and recently decided to move in together. I asked for a trial run where we both kept our flats for a few months so no one loses their place if it doesn't work out. He had issues with this, but I held firm that it was for everyone's benefit, and he eventually agreed. We decided he would stay with me as my flat is bigger and closer to his work. Then, after a few months, we would look for a house. I work at home, and he's now close enough to his office to come back for lunch. He initially assumed that we'd be eating lunch together each day because I'm home, but I don't eat lunch and I don't take a break for it. My preference is to take smaller breaks when I want them and eat a snack around 3pm. A piece of fruit and a bag of nuts is my go-to. This has been an issue since he moved in. He walked in while I was on calls two days running and loudly commented about it being lunchtime in the UK. I work for an international org. I was furious as it prompted an unnecessary and awkward conversation with my boss who was concerned I was risking burnout. He agreed to knock going forward. Although my position is that during his lunch hour, we don't really need to make time to see each other at all, as he will be back for the day in 5 hours. The issue is, he then started insisting I need to eat breakfast and lunch even if he's not included. For context, I gained some weight when I started working from home, and my current eating habits suit my schedule while keeping my weight where I want it. His claim is that I starve myself to log in as soon as I wake up and that I'm too obsessed with work to take breaks. I've explained that my eating habits suit me and I don't want to change them, but he uses me eating normally at the weekend as some kind of gotcha and won't accept what I'm saying. He brings it up daily. This is a problem, but not the problem. The problem is that this has been going on for nearly a month and it just isn't the life for me. We sat down this evening to talk, and I said that I'm not enjoying living together and that it's too much too soon, so I would like for him to move back to his place this weekend. Turns out, he didn't keep the flat, he gave it up straight away and moved his stuff to his mum's. His reasoning being he knew we would be fine. Dear reader, we are not fine. He says I need to put the effort in to work through this and compromise, and that I'm too angry to talk, and me being a workaholic is going to cost us the relationship, so we'll calm down and talk about it another time. My position is that him lying about his place is a deal breaker even if the rest wasn't. My best friend just had a baby and my mom's on holiday, so I have no one to tell me if I'm out of order. Reddit, am I the jerk? I think OP isn't the jerk in this situation, and I think they kept each other's flats, or at least were supposed to, for this very exact reason. What frustrates me is it seems like Alex just doesn't comprehend that what OP's saying, as far as him needing to move back to his flat, isn't about compromising or making things work. It's the fact that OP knows it isn't gonna work. Full stop. I just hope for OP's sake it doesn't get too messy. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Available Arc. Am I the jerk for asking a mom in my group if she needed someone to talk to about her drinking? A new woman joined my mom group about two months ago, Sherry. At first, she seemed great. Nice, funny, smart, has three young kids who are awesome. We like having her around. Except me and Lauren noticed something. Every single time we would get together, Sherry would try to make it into a wine night. Hang out to let the kids play at the playground in the evening? She'll bring the wine. Hanging out after school sign-up day? Wine time. Kids' birthday party comes around? Well, she's got the beverages, including the wine. Every single time we hang out, she has to have a glass in her hand. The glass turns into a bottle. The issue is that she does not seem like she's had an entire bottle of wine. So, about two weeks ago, we all planned on getting the kids together and going to a great water park. Obviously, water plus alcohol is a dangerous combo, especially with kids. So, when Sherry pulled out a pint of Tito's and waved it around, telling everyone she had a little treat for the moms, I felt like I had to say something. I said, oh, I don't think it's a good idea for us to mix alcohol at a water park like that especially with the kids around. She said it would be fine. She does it all the time. At this, I was kind of more alarmed. So when it was just the two of us, I said, Sherry, are you okay? 
Do you maybe need to talk to someone about your drinking? She looked shocked and said no, and then acted like I was absolutely crazy. She said she had no idea where I got that idea, that her drinking was absolutely normal, and that where she's from, Atlanta, it's perfectly normal for people to drink at social gatherings. I said okay, and that I was just concerned because I've never hung out with her when she hasn't been drinking. She got defensive and told me that she didn't like people up her butt monitoring her. After that point, her mood was soured for the day. Lauren told me that it was a good thing that I said something, but two of the other moms said that it was going to cause a huge issue, and that now Sherry's talking crap about me being a busybody. I was not trying to shame her, but I know how being a stay-at-home mom can turn people into addicts real fast, and I didn't want to see her end up that way. Am I the jerk? I don't think Opie's the jerk because they had good intentions about it, although it was probably presented in a poor way. I think it would have been maybe better for OP to have asked about how it seems like every week there has to be like a drinking element to it, and then maybe hoping it kind of branches into a more open discussion. But apparently also getting like defensive about these kinds of questions is actually kind of an aspect that appears a lot in people who do have alcoholic tendencies. So really, I'm not sure. I think being a wine mom or drinking wine all the time kind of has gotten a little too normalized, but I don't think OP's the jerk here for what they did. This next story is from Dear Account 5349 Am I the jerk for saying my stepdaughter is not entitled to my late ex-wife or daughter's money? I'm married to Ashley. Our girls from previous relationships are both 17. My ex-wife was Sam. She and I were never a great couple, but we were great friends and great parents, slash co-parents, so we stayed very close after the divorce. I was aware that she had started saving for our daughter's future education. We had reached somewhat of a compromise on how to handle that. I did most of the spending on her adolescent activities and extras, so all her extracurricular activities, hobbies, and, for the most part, gifts that we shared, while she saved for the future in an effective way. I never knew how much was in that account until two years ago when my ex died. It was then that I learned she saved a hefty amount, and that aside for allowing for her funeral expenses, she had left money for our daughter to use as she saw fit outside of the college money. Ashley and I married seven years ago, and at the same time we had discussed money for the girls, etc. I explained that I wasn't saving, but my ex-wife was. She hadn't started saving anything for her daughter at that point, and her ex was not saving either. So we started to put a little by when we could, but we were never able to save huge chunks at a time. After Sam died, money became a much larger issue. Ashley was upset to learn my daughter had a considerable amount more than my stepdaughter for college, and that she had money to spare. It only became a bigger deal this past May. My daughter told me she had decided to do community college in her mom's hometown so she could be close to her grandparents for a while and could still follow her dreams. Ashley then brought up how some of that money could go to my stepdaughter. I told her no, that it wasn't our money, and even if she tried to suggest that it would be mine, seeing as my daughter is a minor, I pointed out that it would be stealing to just take it from her, and I'd never contributed to that fund directly. It would be taking my ex-wife's money. Ashley went off about Sam putting so much away when she knew our daughter had a stepsister, and how she was selfish to make her so much better off than her only sibling. I told her she needed to get over that because Sam only had one child to think about and it wasn't her job to think about my stepdaughter or even any bio kids I could have after our divorce. Ashley told me to think about my stepdaughter. I told her my stepdaughter is not entitled to my daughter's money or my ex-wife's money, whichever way she wanted to look at it. She asked how I could be so callous about her daughter's disadvantage. Am I the jerk? I think OP is definitely not the jerk here, and surprisingly I feel like a lot of people in this situation, at least those that would end up on r slash am I the jerk, would be the kind that want to pull the money from their daughter. I think it's honestly great and refreshing to see somebody like OP who can contextualize where that money came from, who it belongs to, and who has a right to it, which is only OP's daughter. This next story is from McNeil1345. Am I the jerk for buying a fire blanket for our new house? Hi all, my partner, 29-year-old female, and I, 27-year-old male, 
have recently bought a house together and will be moving in in two weeks. As this is the biggest purchase of our lives, I want to make sure we're well protected in case of emergencies. So I've been looking online for safety devices. I found a fire blanket for 9 British pounds, so I decided to buy it with my own money, as it's better to have and not need than need and not have. The fire blanket arrived the following day, and for some reason this was a huge issue for my girlfriend, and started a really unnecessary argument. She was questioning why I bought it, how I could prioritize a fire blanket over other items, furniture, washing machine, TV, etc., what my logic was behind buying it, and how we don't need a fire blanket, as none of her family and friends have one. She also said this was a huge red flag from her side as it shows I have questionable logic and decision making and she's worried I may do something even more stupid in the future. From my side, I was only thinking about our safety. It can easily be taken with us when we move. I used my money to pay for it and it's just a good item to have in case of a pan fire. In addition, I've been looking at the bigger items, but there's still people living at the property we're moving to, so we can't exactly buy things like furniture until they've moved out. I honestly don't see the big deal as it's just a fire blanket, but the argument resurfaced this morning and she said her family and friends agree with her and think I'm an idiot for buying it. I've been mulling this over in my mind trying to think what could possibly be so controversial about a fire blanket, but I'm coming up empty each time. So Reddit, I've come to you to try and get some perspective and objectivity. Am I the jerk? I'm of the opinion that nobody can be an idiot or a jerk for buying something in the best interest of safety. Especially when you only pay 9 pounds for it. That's about 11 US dollars by the way. For the ease of mind it gives you for knowing that if you ever have a grease fire going on you have something to battle it with. What's the issue with it? I would say not only that you should get a fire extinguisher. What's next? Is OP an idiot for buying new batteries for the smoke alarm too? Maybe it wouldn't be wise to spend that money on that carbon monoxide monitor. If anything, for OP's sake, I would take this as a red flag to keep in the back of your mind. Obviously OP cares about their safety, so they should probably consider the safety of their future with this person. Our next story is from Dad of Two Throwaway. Am I the jerk for taking my wife's side after she screamed and cursed at my mother? I, 33-year-old male, am married to my wonderful wife Melody, 29-year-old female, and she's currently pregnant with our first child together. I have a 6-year-old daughter, Tina, whose mother I split 50-50 custody with, so I know for the most part what Melody needs in order to feel supported while she carries our child. I've been spending lots of time making sure she's comfortable and taking on more of the load at home, so she's not doing too much. This is her first child after all, and it's obviously a lot for her physically and emotionally. My mother and Melody don't get along too well. Mom didn't like my ex either. We broke up because we were headed on different paths. Not because of my mother, and there's no bad blood. So I think she just doesn't like her because she's dating me for whatever reason. It's weird. She's very nitpicky about Melody. How much she does around the house, how emotional she is, Melody already cries very easily, and being pregnant made her even more sensitive, which is fine. The fact that she wants to be a stay-at-home mom, it just seems like nothing Melody does is okay. I do, however, stand up for her and do not just allow my mom to talk down to her. Today, before picking up my daughter from summer camp, Melody went to three different grocery stores to find rotisserie chicken. She's been talking about it since last night and really, really wanted one. She sent me a picture message documenting her quest for the chicken and finally found it. My girl was happy. Rotisserie chicken is also kind of a comfort food for her like spaghetti because her mom used to make one of those when she was having a lazy day and didn't feel like cooking. She was planning on serving that with some other basic sides for dinner. Perfectly fine by me. My mother came by to see Tina and started telling Melody the chicken is bad for her and she shouldn't be eating that while pregnant. Melody said it's fine. She usually eats healthy and just wants this one thing she's craving. My mom went on about how unhealthy it was and said she needs to eat something else. Melody said no and went to the backyard to FaceTime her family out of state. When she came back, my mom had thrown out the food and ordered takeout a salad for Melody and pizza for everyone else. 
Melody asked where the chicken was, and my mother told her that she needs to start being a responsible mother and eat correctly for the baby. Melody screamed, What the freak is wrong with you? Why are you always such a witch to me? She then started crying and called me home. I came back and asked my mother to leave after hearing her story and said she is not to come back until she apologizes for how she treated Melody. My mom went on about how I'm choosing another woman over her, but I just think enough is enough. And Melody reached her limit. She apologized to me for blowing up when Tina was in the house, but I told her it's okay, things happen. Tina's okay, and I went to find her another chicken before the store closed. My dad thinks I'm right for taking Melody's side, but my brother thinks I should always defend mom. So am I the jerk? OP is definitely not the jerk here. I don't care how wrong you think it is, you don't go around throwing away somebody else's food, especially when you don't even live in that household. And I don't know who this grandma thinks they are, but I don't think rotisserie chicken is really all that bad. Honestly, OP kicking them out and then going out and finding a replacement chicken, OP is a saint and honestly deserves a lot of praise for how they handled this situation. Forget all that noise OP's brother's making about how they should always defend mom. Choose another woman over her? Sorry, I forgot OP and their mom were dating. Our next story is from throwaway DNS and S and S and S and S. Am I the jerk for taking in my niece despite my husband's complaints even though we are child free? 25-year-old female and 27-year-old male, niece is 3 years old. My sister asked if we would be able to take her daughter since she had to go out of town for a surgical procedure and wouldn't be able to care for her daughter while she recovers. I ran this by my husband who immediately said no and shook his head. I said it was my niece and that just because we weren't really fans of having kids ourselves doesn't mean we can't do a favor for my family. It ended in an argument, but I ended up taking her anyways. He refuses to do anything with her. This isn't the first time they've met. He's just never really interacted with her, which I don't expect him to. But when I brought up that he could have a better attitude about this, he just said that I shouldn't have brought a kid into our home. He also went on a rant that because of this, I'm probably going to change my mind about having kids and he won't put up with that said like that he will divorce me if I even suggest it. My niece hadn't even been much of a problem. In fact, she's usually quiet unless she's hungry or tired. Yes, she gets into stuff and makes messes, but I assume that's pretty standard toddler behavior. I don't understand why he's so angry since it's not like he's having to do anything. I think OP isn't the jerk and bless them for trying to help out for their own sibling. I don't think I'm the only one to think this but I feel like OP's husband is the one acting more like a toddler than their own three-year-old niece is. This is one of those situations where the husband needs a nice dose of ride it out, it'll be over soon, just put up with it. OP's husband seems like the kind of person to complain super hard about nagging and then turn around and nag a million times about something they don't like. Our next story is from throwaway57493847636 Am I the jerk for not wearing contacts on a double date? I, 25 year old female, was recently set up on a blind date with a friend of my sister's, 30 year old female, boyfriend, 30 year old male. She was really excited about it and refused to give me any details about him, but said I'd know him when I saw him. And I did. It turns out her boyfriend's friend was my former middle school crush, 27 year old male. We went to a small middle school so everything was everyone's business, so he knew about it. It was sort of embarrassing, but I'm also hot now for the first time after losing a lot of weight, so I don't really care. The issue arose when my date, Eric, asked me what happened to my eye. He knew me before I started wearing contacts and encouraged me to take them out if I was comfortable. I have heterochromia, one blue eye, one brown. Ever since I started high school, I've been wearing brown contacts for a variety of reasons. The first is because my vision is awful. The second is for my own comfort. Most people are normal about it, but I've had some people be aggressive about proving that my eyes are fake. The third is because my sister didn't want me taking attention away from her during her senior year of high school, so she asked me to wear contacts. After she graduated, I stopped wearing them, but whenever I would do anything with her, She would request that I wear contacts to cover up my condition. I do it automatically whenever I see her now because if I don't, she'll get really withdrawn and start crying. 
Anyway, my sister was really happy that the date went well and suggested that we all go out together. We ended up going to a local farm and garden center. I decided not to wear my contacts because my eyes tend to get very irritated with the combination of the heat and the dust. My sister knows this, so I figured her suggesting this particular venue was her way of giving me permission to come in just glasses. When her boyfriend saw my eyes, he was fascinated. He kept asking me questions about it and making jokes. At the end of the day, he wanted to take a group photo but had us do it inside the store, so no one would have to wear sunglasses. Afterwards, I got a text from my sister saying, Thanks for ruining a good day. I eventually texted her back saying I didn't want to make things weird, but she could have told him about the eye thing beforehand. She never responded, but I got a phone call from my mom a few hours ago berating me for ruining my sister's wedding. Apparently the reason she was so upset was she's been secretly engaged for the past week. Only my mom knew. They were waiting until after my mom's birthday to announce it. Sister didn't want her fiancé or his family to know about my eyes until after the wedding, so I would look normal in pictures and his family wouldn't harass me about it, which I sort of appreciate. I feel really bad that she's fighting with her boyfriend over me, and I'm kicking myself for not just wearing contacts. I love my sister and I don't want her to be upset. Despite her thing with my eyes, we've always been really close. So I think pretty clearly OP's not the jerk and OP is weirdly conditioned to be so okay with hiding their eye color for the sake of their sister's sanity. I think this whole story is ridiculous and OP shouldn't wear contacts because they just feel obligated to not upstage somebody from being naturally who they are. Just the whole thing blows my mind. And our final story of the day is from Blink at Fort Queen. Am I the jerk for bringing my one-year-old to a distillery? Important info, we were in the tasting room with couches and sitting areas, and some tables. We were initially the only ones there. Then, just as we finished, two other people walk in. We were sitting in one of the lounging slash sitting areas, and little one was getting fussy in her stroller. So I took her out, and she played right around me on the stroller. The other people chose to sit at the lounging section across from us. Little one was laughing and playing quietly for the most part, but occasionally did start doing that excited yell slash scream thing kids do because she was happy. It didn't happen a lot, maybe two to three times over the course of 30 minutes. She was babbling and talking a lot, but it wasn't loud at all. The two gentlemen were clearly not impressed and after a bit moved to a table. Then a bit later I heard one of them mumble something about squealing and asked a worker if they could go sit outside. We ended up leaving soon after. I've never had this experience in public before, and I'm wondering if it was because it was a distillery that there's some unwritten rule about not bringing kids and maybe I'm the jerk? Honestly, a tasting room or a distillery is kind of one of those places that really is kind of meant for adults only. You know, the people who are legally able to drink at those places. Honestly, it's kind of surprising that there's places that don't have a rule against having anybody there that's under the legal age for wherever you're at. Like, if this was in the UK, I believe it would be 16. So I think OP is just kind of like a gentle jerk here. As long as the place doesn't have a rule against it, they're within the right to bring their kid, but it doesn't pass the vibe check. Am I the jerk for blocking access to my food and threatening no help with accommodation? I, 22-year-old male, am in my first serious relationship with H, 25-year-old female. We've been together just under a year. She moved into my place three months ago. Everything was fine in the beginning, but once we started seeing each other more frequently, I noticed her bad habit. Every time we went out and food was involved, she would sample my food before I got to it. We're not just talking of a chip here and there for my chip butt sandwich. In actual classy places, she would take the first chunk of my steak or salmon or cake. You name it, she would take the first bite. I had several talks with her about this, but she said it was cute and not sinister. Four months ago, H got a job with training opportunity. After completion, when she returns to her normal place, the salary will be higher. My place is 40 minutes closer than where she used to live, and I offered her to live with me rent-free if she stopped with this behavior. The first month, she stuck to our agreement. 
The second month, she slipped up a few times. This last month, she's gone back to her old ways. Last weekend, a turning point. I bake as a hobby. I made cake. After dividing it into eight, I left it in the fridge while I went out with a friend. Usually when I bake and friends drop me off, I'll fetch a few slices and thank them for the lift home with the cake. Imagine my surprise when I saw that each piece had a bite taken. I phoned my friend that I owed him cake and he needn't wait for me to come back down. I was angry. I told her that she embarrassed me and we needed to figure out a solution. She went defensive and said she ate it due to loving me so much. That all women do this and guys love it. I made it very clear that she needed to stop now or there would be consequences. Next day, I bought a lockbox for the fridge. She was livid but couldn't do much. Last night she broke the lock and had taken a bite out of all my snacks and two slices of baguettes in there. I told her to pack her stuff and leave while I stay with my mother for a few hours. She called me a jerk for making her homeless and possibly ruining her employment opportunities. Reddit, am I the jerk? This is one of those things that just drives you insane, and it's also a very fair request for them to say, hey, knock this off or this just isn't going to work out. If you were dating somebody for a brief time that did this, would you feel bad about kicking them out knowing they have nowhere else to go? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from TAGF No. Am I the jerk for keeping the engagement ring and giving up asking to propose after propose? In front of my parents and in-laws, I'm 25-year-old female, my girlfriend Molly, 26-year-old female, for the last six months, started with a joke that I've already made clear that I don't like. It consists of her saying no quickly to anything I ask. I know it sounds silly, but I ask her to get a glass of water for me. She says no, and after one minute, I'm almost getting up. She says she's joking and get some water. I ask her to wash the dishes, she says no. I say I love you, she says no. I ask her to take her clothes, she says no. Everything is joking and after 30 seconds to a minute she does it, but she's addicted to doing it. I've already made it clear several times that I don't like it, even more so in I love you, she's the only person I can say that so it's special to me. And there are things that are serious and I need her to answer seriously. And if she says no to everything jokingly, I can't tell when she's saying a real no. It's already happened. I keep saying this is boring and I don't like it. She stops doing it and goes back to doing it after a week. After a brief discussion, she played this prank in front of our friends. Me asking, love, can you give me some medicine? And she with no kidding. She stopped doing it for one month. Yesterday, we welcomed my parents, in-laws, and our two best friends to our house. Everyone knew that I was going to propose to her and I called them because we always plan this proposal with our loved ones attending, participating in this special day. I asked her to marry me and she said a quick no and I was so grumpy and panicked and upset. Everyone looked in shock for 30 seconds for her to laugh and say she was joking, finally saying yes. I was so embarrassed and disappointed. I put the ring box back in and said I'd take it out to cool off. I didn't even let her say anything. She kept texting me, not answering calls, saying it was just a joke and that I knew she always did that. She said I left a difficult situation in the house because it was very clear that I'd given up on purpose and did so in front of my parents and in-laws. She stressed that I was making the situation uncomfortable because of a silly joke. Well, I slept in a hotel and I'm still in it. My parents supported me, but my in-laws are calling me a jerk for giving up on proposing, disproportionately humiliating their daughter. I just really think there's a time for jokes. And that moment, clearly, she knew I didn't like it and decided to do it anyway. Am I the jerk? Honestly, in my life, I've done a lot of similar things where somebody close to me asks me to do something, I say no, and immediately go to do whatever they asked anyways. But when I do that, it's far and few between, and I just can't imagine thinking it's fun to pull that cutesy little prank, if you want to call it that, when you're getting proposed to. It's just a little over immature, and them doing that in that moment, I think can serve as like a really good reminder that they honestly annoy you and maybe it isn't right. As brutal as that sounds, I don't think OP's the jerk. 
Our next story is from individual12578. Am I the jerk for buying my granddaughter more expensive gifts than my grandson? I have many grandchildren, but this is about the oldest ones. Jake, 18, and Maya, 18. They're cousins, not siblings. 18th birthdays are very important in our family. So for Jake's 18th birthday, I told him I'll buy him whatever he wants, as long as it's reasonable, of course. He told me he needs a new phone, so I bought one for him, which cost me around $1,000. I encouraged him to choose other gifts as well, but he said it's enough. For Maya's 18th birthday, I did the same thing and told her to choose whatever she wants. She gave me a list of the things that she wanted, and it cost me about $7,000. I was a bit unsure whether I should buy them or not, but decided that it would be unfair if I don't buy it, because Jake had the same offer and he chose not to get anything else. Jake's father, my son, was very angry at Maya's birthday. He said I'm showing favoritism. I tried to explain to him that I'm not because Jake had the same offer. His argument was that I raised Maya, her parents worked a lot and I was basically her babysitter, while I didn't have as much contact with Jake. His mom was a stay-at-home mom, so naturally Maya would be closer to me and it would be easier for her to ask me for things. Honestly, a lot of people are saying OP's the jerk here, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I think OP would be the jerk only if they're not willing to correct and kind of even out the value here. They're saying, oh, they should have capped it out at $1,000 after Jake settled at that point. But I'm more of the opinion, let Maya get whatever they want and then make it fair to Jake. Now if OP is refusing to even it out in any way and sticks firm, then they would definitely be the jerk. I guess the question is, are they a jerk for not going out of their way to even it out after Maya got the gifts? By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Acceptable Scene 6870. Am I the jerk for not telling my husband he smells sooner and ruining a friend's wedding? This week was the wedding of two of my husbands, 33-year-old male, and my, 31-year-old female, longtime friends. For some background, recently we've been having some issues. I told him I needed some space, so we agreed he should move back in with his mom temporarily. I wasn't thrilled about this because she tends to baby him, though I had to accept it as he had nowhere else to go and I wanted him out of the house. I wondered what to do about the wedding. We talked and decided it would be best for us to go together and for him to move back home afterwards. He didn't have time before the wedding to pack up his things and so got ready at his mom's while I got ready at home and we planned to meet there. When he arrived, I was already chatting with friends. He came over to us and immediately I noticed this rotten stench on him. He smelled like he'd been dumpster diving. It made my eyes water a little. I noticed our friends noticing, but he was completely oblivious and kept on chatting. I tried to let him know discreetly, but he wasn't getting the hint at all. We took our seats in the chapel, and the service was beautiful. By this point, my nose had pretty much tuned out the smell, but it was clearly affecting other people, and I still hadn't had a chance to let him know. After the service, I saw an old girlfriend I hadn't seen in years and wanted to catch up. Apparently, while I was chatting with her, a friend had pulled Hubby aside and basically told him he stunk. He got upset and demanded we leave immediately. In the car, we argued and he told me I was a horrible wife to let him embarrass himself like that in front of friends and that I was probably laughing behind his back. He said that I knew he could be forgetful and since he was my responsibility as my wife, I should have called him up at his mom's to remind him to shower. Usually he'll come in when I'm in. I was speechless and said nothing the entire car ride home while he berated me. This morning, I checked my phone and we both have been removed from a number of group chats that included friends that went to that wedding. I heard through some friends that the bride feels we ruined her day. More people were talking about my husband than we thought, and she no longer wants to speak with us. I'm shocked and really hurt by this and have been feeling guilty all day. I didn't want to embarrass him by letting him know when other people were around, but now I've cost him friends and feel like I've handled it all horribly. So am I the jerk? So I don't think OP's outright the jerk. I think 
it's usually the best policy to just let them know as soon as you can. That said, the husband literally told OP, it's your job as my wife to call me up and remind me to shower. To remind you to shower? Are you in elementary school? Just for that alone, OP's not the jerk. This next story is from Thy Shall Be Cold. Am I the jerk for refusing to talk to my sibling? My sister, I'll call her T here, has always been more successful than me, especially academically. I have certain learning difficulties, but I'm in no way dumb. I just need more instructions for me to be able to complete certain tasks. T always seemed to believe that she's better than me because of this, to the extent that she would say it to my face, and honestly, I couldn't really argue with her because our parents took her side. A few years ago, T failed to get into Oxford, her dream university, but still ended up at a very good university. At the time, I was working my butt off with schoolwork because I also wanted to get into a very good university and make my family, including her, proud of me. I managed to graduate high school in the top of my class. I applied to multiple universities, one of them being Cambridge. I didn't think I would be able to get in, even with my good grades in high school and extra activities, but it was my dream university. To my surprise, I managed to get into four of the five universities I applied for, Cambridge being one of the four. I was very happy about it, but T was not. She came into my room and started crying and shouting at me because I got into a university that was more prestigious than hers. She told me that if I was a good sibling, I wouldn't mind going to a less known university and started saying stuff like, How could you do something like this to me? I'm the smart child. You hate me, don't you? I bet you'll fail and drop out with that pathetic IQ of yours. I barely spoke to her after that. And when I moved out, I blocked her on every social media I had. My parents are very mad at me, saying that I should have at least talked to her and let her apologize and tell me that she acted that way because she was just very angry in that moment and didn't mean it. They say I'm being very immature, but that was the last straw for me and I don't want to talk to her, even though it's been almost a year since we had the fight. This next story is from Lazy Wright. Am I the jerk for calling my girlfriend an inconsiderate jerk for waking me up on my day off? Every day, I get up at 5am for work. I do everything I can to be as quiet as physically possible to not wake my partner. Of course, it's not going to be perfect every time, but I'd say around 90% of the time, she doesn't wake up at all while I'm showering and getting ready, etc. She, on the other hand, can be flexible as to when she gets up and starts work. She works from home, and in her role, she doesn't have any direct superior to monitor her, or at least one that cares. Now, this woman is atrocious with punctuality and time management. She's always late to everything. She wakes up late almost every day, but as she's able to just log onto her laptop straight out of bed, she can just get away with it. The fact that I have to get up early for work every day means I really value a lie-in on my days off. It's something I've always appreciated and taken pleasure in, sleeping in till 9 or 10 a.m. when possible. We have no kids or any other responsibilities that would make this an impossible or otherwise irresponsible pleasure. I usually have weekends off the same as her, but due to the shift pattern I'm on, I sometimes have weekdays off, this week being Wednesday and Thursday. Now this morning, as per usual, she woke up late for work. Actually, she woke up, made a cup of tea, sat on TikTok for a bit, and then had to rush around because she was late for work. This is regular behavior for her. She's now frantically rushing around trying to get ready, quite literally running around the house in and out of rooms, up and down the stairs, banging doors and stomping around everywhere. Making it worse, she was also wearing flip-flops so I could hear them loudly slapping against her feet with every step. When she finally stopped darting around like a cat in heat, she came into the bedroom to use her makeup and toiletries. Every single can, bottle, brush, pencil, whatever gets slammed on the table, some drop on the floor, hairspray and perfume being sprayed everywhere. This is the same woman who asks me to spray my deodorant outside the room because it's loud and makes the room toxic. She then says she needs to use the hair dryer. I responded, oh, because you've been so quiet up till now. She just replied, I don't care, and used the hair dryer twice. This is what really pissed me off, honestly. 
She clearly could just not at all give a crap in the slightest is what really gets under my skin and has annoyed the freak out of me. To me it's just inconsiderate and shows the ugly side of her character and somewhat crappy attitude. So I angrily called her an inconsiderate jerk. She almost seemed a little confused and said that it was really uncalled for and that I was overreacting. I wouldn't mind as much if it was a one-off or rare occurrence, but it isn't. While typing this, I do feel like I might have overreacted a bit, but it's really aggravated me and made me wake up in a horrible mood. Am I the jerk for reacting poorly to this? Do I genuinely owe her an apology? I don't think OP's the jerk, and I think they have one of two ways to try to handle this. One is sit them down and try to talk it out and explain that they both have to be courteous when they wake up. Or two, fight fire with fire and at 5am show them how nice it is to have all those interruptions. Our next story is from Little Repeat 2427 Am I the jerk for making my mom cry and hurting her marriage? My mom has me, 16 year old female, and my brothers Nico, 17 year old male, and Shay, 18 year old male, with our dad. He died on my 5th birthday really suddenly. Mom was young and had the three of us, and she ended up meeting our stepdad less than a year later. I think it was about two years after my dad died that she introduced him to us as her boyfriend, and they married fast after that. At the time, mom and my stepdad wanted him to adopt us and to change our last names to his, so we could be a legal family and share a family name. We had said no, but they went through the process for the adoption, and when it came time for court, the judge took us aside and we spoke to him. We expressed that we didn't want to be adopted or to have our last name changed. It's not something I remember the best because at the time I was really upset, but the end result was the judge turned down the adoption request and the change of name request. My grandma said that the judge told my mom and stepdad that he didn't want to leave us feeling even more robbed of our dad by taking away his name and his ties to us legally. After all that, my stepdad tried so hard to get us to start calling him dad. He always called us his kids, his daughters, sons, etc. But he made for a real emphasis on how much he wanted to be our dad and how he wanted to feel us accept him in that kind of way. Mom would sit and tell us how we were blessed to have two dads, one in heaven who looked down on us and one who was with us on earth and could raise us and be the parent we needed. She said it would be such a positive thing to embrace him as our dad. My brothers and I never did call him dad. Mom had more kids with our stepdad and they called him dad, but it was always a problem that we didn't. My oldest brother graduated last year and he moved out soon after. He graduated early and there were some things that went down which resulted in mom and stepdad bringing Nico and me to therapy with them. Four weeks ago during therapy, my mom and stepdad brought up how tired he is of feeling like he raised us for nothing because we never show him the love he believes he deserves and we don't show him the respect he wants by denying him the title of dad. They said he's very close to leaving. So mom asked if either of us would consider trying to be more open to the idea. Would we at least refer to him as dad to others even if we don't call him dad to his face? I said I would never be okay with that. My brother too. Mom cried and my stepdad, well I think that was a breaking point for him. It feels like their marriage is all but over, and deep down, I know both of them blame me and my brothers. I hate seeing my mom so upset. My stepdad can't hide the fact that he's angry with us over it. Am I the jerk? So, I think OP's not the jerk. This is obviously a very complex situation, but the fact of the matter is, the stepdad, I feel, is trying to replace the father. And personally, I believe if the kids don't want to call you dad or want to feel like it's essentially replacing their own father, I feel like you have to respect that, even if you really want that title of dad. It's the kind of thing I think you grin and bear and be a dad to them as much as you can in action and not necessarily title. I think them forcing the issue only made it worse because it just makes them even less comfortable with the idea of calling them dad or embracing them in at least that fashion. Our next story is from David Throwaway AITA. Am I the jerk for publicly telling my biological father that if he wanted to act like my dad, then he had until I was 32 to do so? My mother passed away a few months after I was born. My biological father, Dan, stayed for the first six years of my life but he ended up remarrying and moving with his new wife across the country. He left me with my grandparents. 
Dan would, at best, visit every bi-annually. He would show up in the morning with some treats and video games for me, talk with me about life, then he would be gone after dinner. Dan's visits would become less frequent as I got older. I have many memories of my grandparents calling Dan when they thought I was asleep. They would beg Dan to visit me more or bring me with him to Georgia because a boy needs his father. I still adored Dan and saw him as my hero for many years. Dan stopped visiting me after I tried to ruin his marriage with my selfishness. Dan didn't call me to wish me a happy 13th birthday, so I called him over hoping that he just didn't want to wake me up because of the time difference. His wife Sarah answered the phone. Sarah was actually a very sweet lady, and I discovered Sarah didn't even know I existed. Dan told Sarah that he'd been visiting California on business and how he was childless. Dan screamed at me later saying how I deliberately tried to ruin his marriage and how selfish I am to always demand his time. After that point, Dan stopped visiting me and I view him as nothing more than a sperm donor to me. I live a pretty good life. My job's nothing to brag about in terms of being fun, but it's honest work and pays well. My wonderful wife and I have a little girl, Harper, who is the joy of my life. I tried not to think about Dan until I started getting notifications on social media. I didn't think Dan had social media. We also have a very generic surname, so I didn't worry about us finding each other. Dan left comments on almost all of our posts about Harper. From her last day of second grade to the newborn pictures, his comments all said how beautiful and bright his granddaughter was. I messaged Dan telling him he has no right to act like Harper's grandfather and to stay away from my family. He replied that Harper was his granddaughter and he gave me life so I owe him some darn respect. I warned him again and blocked him. I made a post the other day and Dan on a second account made a comment about how Harper gets her good looks from her grandpa. I replied to Dan that if he wanted to act like my dad, he had until I was 32 to do so, and he has no right to pretend he's some great father and grandfather when he moved across the country and left me with my grandparents at 6. I blocked Dan again. I learned secondhand that Dan is being shamed online and will likely delete his account soon. Family members said I was right about Dan, but calling him out online was not the mature way to handle things. I realize I could have just blocked him, but for me, you don't get to ditch your kid and then swoop in to act like a family man now that it suits you. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk, and if anything, people are just uncomfortable with it because, I mean, it's just too darn real. But I think OP said nothing but the truth and did nothing but okay things. And to comment on OP saying, we have a very generic surname so they didn't worry about finding each other. I'm assuming this is Facebook, and let me tell you dude, whatever background tracking Facebook has, you just type in the name of a relative that you have no connection to but you know is your relative, and they'll just pop up at the top of the search results. They got some serious data collection and connection stuff going on. People who don't even have a Facebook account have a shadow data identifier. Our next story is from Confusion Quirky 7381 Am I the jerk for telling my husband to get over himself before he alienates our older daughter? My husband and I have been married for 21 years and we have three children together. Two daughters ages 16 and 15 and a son who's 13. My husband and I have always had a good marriage and are very similar in many ways except one. Our taste in names. My husband's always favored a more traditional and classic name while I preferred a name like my own more different and out there and modern. When it came to naming our children, there were no names we both liked. So we compromised. My husband named our oldest, I named our second child, and our son was given a first name by my husband and a middle name by me. Our oldest has never liked her name. She has to change it a few times over the years, asking for a name more like her sister. My husband would tell her how beautiful her name was and how it was meaningful because it represented her family. She said it felt boring and old. In the last two years, she's been more open about this and has brought it to our attention many times after. She found a name she loves and has been using and wants to use. Recently she sat us down and asked that we consider letting her change it before she turns 18 so she can start off her adult life with less paperwork needing to be changed and less hoops to jump through. My husband shot it down hard. 
He told her that she has a beautiful name and that she'll be thankful for it in a few years when she enters the professional world and wants to be taken seriously. Our daughter pointed out that I never had trouble. He told her that he gave her the name with love, with thought, and tied her to several family members. When she pressed more, he told her the decision was final. I told her we would discuss it and talk to her again. My husband said no way. Once we were alone, I told him to get over himself, that I understood he loved her name as it is now and had poured love into choosing her name, but he's not the one who has to live with it, and I pointed out that he will alienate her by refusing point blank to even consider it and to take such a hard stance which implies quite strongly that even if she changed her name at 18, he would still call her by the name he gave her. He said that is exactly what he would do, and I told him that everything I said needed to be emphasized then. He said I couldn't talk because all our kids apparently favor my taste in names, and he might as well have not have chosen any names or cared at all. I could tell he was upset. He felt somewhat personally rejected by it, so I'm now questioning if I am the jerk. I think OP's not the jerk, and this is just something that it might hurt for them, you know? It might suck to basically feel like a choice you made wasn't liked. Frankly, I get why that hurts, probably hurts quite a lot. But at 16, they know they want to change their name. They're coming to you to help them, to make it easier on them in the future. As long as they're not trying to go change their name to like Bong or something, this is something that the husband needs to get through their feelings, get over it, and learn to support and love their kid who has to live with the name. And our final story of the day is from Flashy Kangaroo 7890 Am I the jerk for not wanting my partner's best friend's input? or her as a bridesmaid in our wedding? I'm female, 29. My partner Jay, 31-year-old male, wants me to include his best friend H, 36-year-old female, as a bridesmaid in our wedding. H and I used to get along a couple of years ago, but she told Jay that she doesn't like me a while back. I've never been rude to H, and I'm always polite and civil when she's over, especially for Jay's sake because I know that H is one of Jay's closest friends. I still talk to her, say hi and bye, but I don't class her as a friend, especially when she's polite to me, but will talk about me saying how she doesn't like me behind my back. Jay and I recently got engaged and we're currently fighting because he wants H to be a bridesmaid in our wedding, but I don't want her to be. I don't want someone to input opinion and be part of my hen's night, especially if she doesn't like me, because I want our wedding and the time leading up to it to be drama free. And I know it'll just cause drama having someone who doesn't like me as part of my bride's party. Jay keeps insisting to get H's opinions and not my friends so I want as a part of my wedding party, and he keeps getting angry and treating me like I'm the jerk for this. I've told Jay that if he wants her opinion, to make her a part of his wedding party, but he won't. I then said we could possibly wait until closer to the wedding date to see if H and I become friends again, but I honestly don't feel as if that will happen. I am starting to feel a bit like a jerk because it is his wedding as well and maybe I should just put up with it for his sake. So Reddit, am I the jerk? This actually highlights a really interesting issue where the groom has a female friend that isn't on great terms with the bride. It's like, well, they should probably still be invited to the party, but they're not going to be invited to the bachelor party, probably. And the bride shouldn't be saddled with just sucking it up because they're friends of the groom. I don't think OP's the jerk here, but I don't know what a great solution would be. Besides just not having them be a part of the parties and probably not be a bridesmaid, I don't know. Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk year video. Would you be the jerk for making your own kid walk home from the hospital? We'll find out but first a story from Sarah Jake 2022. Am I the jerk for flipping out on my fiance for cancelling all the vegan food options from our wedding food menu behind my back? My fiance, 31-year-old male, and I, 25-year-old female, are getting married soon. There wasn't that much disagreed on during the wedding planning except for food. Me and my family are vegans, and there's so many reasons why we chose this lifestyle, and one of them being that we have a history of health issues. My fiancé and his family are the complete opposite. They're hardcore meat eaters, which is fine by me, obviously. However, when deciding on the wedding food menu, I wanted to add four to five vegan options. My fiancé and his mom objected, saying it was a waste of money over food that isn't real food. They also argued that this would be offensive for their guests. 
and suggested my vegan options just be the good old salad and appetizers. His mom wanted cupcakes. I said no because, for one, it's me and my family who's paying, and two, I want to make my guests feel welcome and not be treated as second-class citizens by being served salad. My fiancé made a face and said, isn't that what vegans eat? I refused to argue about it and said it was final. The other day, I found out that he had cancelled all the vegan options and took them off the menu completely and behind my back. I was seething. I called him at work but he kept hanging up on me. I went straight to his workplace and confronted him there and just flipped out on him. He was stunned to see me. He at first said it was his mom's idea, then told me to go home because I was making a scene at the office. The fight continued at home, and he defended himself by saying that I sort of made him resort to doing this after I kept brushing off his thoughts and input, and refusing to accommodate for his family. But there were plenty of meat options, why can't I get 4-5 to vegan options, when I'm paying for it? He yelled that it was his wedding too, not my family's. My family said it was fine and they'll figure it out and told me to let it go, but I refused. Am I the jerk for putting my foot down on this? I think it's safe to say that OP's not the jerk here. I mean, let alone the fact that they went behind their back, it's just, what's the actual issue with having vegan meals? I just can't fathom why it's so stigmatized. For any of you guys that are watching that aren't vegan or vegetarian, if you went to a wedding or an event and you found out they served only vegan options, would that bother you in any way? I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Our next story is from Practical Grand 6104 Am I the jerk for telling my wife it's ridiculous to cry over soup? My wife is 4 months pregnant with our 5th child. We have a 7 year old girl, a 6 year old girl, a 4 year old boy, and a 2 year old boy now. Since childcare is so expensive, she's been staying home. Money's tight right now and her car broke down so we've been relying on mine. She texted me and told me that she was craving a particular can of soup, so I bought it and brought it home. She placed it on the counter and said she would make it after she gave the kids a bath. While she was upstairs, my dad came over and mentioned he was hungry, so I told him to help himself to anything in the kitchen as we had made dinner shortly before. Well, he ended up leaving to go home, and my wife came downstairs, then I heard her frantically searching for something. I asked what she was doing, and she was looking for the soup she left out. I told her I haven't seen it and that my dad came over, but he doesn't usually eat canned foods. I called him and he admitted that he did in fact take it and that he was sorry because he was unaware she was saving it. When I told her this, she started sobbing and saying she can never have one thing in this house and how bad she was craving it and wanting it so bad, she cried for almost an hour over it. Later, I told her she was being ridiculous and that she was an adult and crying over something as stupid as a can of soup was for children. She told me I didn't understand and she's feeling very emotional lately and stressed. I talked to my mom who told me I needed to give her grace and that my words were very a hole Am I the jerk? I knew we were already heading down a really bad path when the story opened with, my wife is four months pregnant. I'm of the opinion that if you're deeply pregnant and you're craving some type of food and you experience the tragic death of that food when it was nearly in your grasp, you can cry over it. Pregnancy is a stressful and emotional thing and I don't blame anybody that's undergoing it crying over a can of soup. Honestly, from what I've heard, it sounds kind of par for the course. The only thing surprising me here is they have a 7 year old, a 6 year old, a 4 year old and a 2 year old and OP hasn't learned by now. This next story is from Extension Charge 9781. Am I the jerk for yelling at my girlfriend for baking a dessert for a dinner party? I, 26 year old male, have been dating my girlfriend Rosie, 23 year old female, for a year now. Rosie and my mother do not get along. It's just about the fact that their personality differences are so large. My mom's a more conservative and reserved person, and Rosie's the opposite of that. My mom's a really picky person and has never been happy with anyone I date over the years. But I usually ignore her because it's not her life. Yes, I always shut down my mother's snarky comments about anyone I date. On to the problem. Tomorrow night, my mother's hosting a dinner party for everyone in our family. I'm not sure about the other families and cultures, but usually when we throw dinner parties, everyone will bring something. I thought this was the perfect time for Rosie and my mom to get along better. I told Rosie that she should home make something. I also made something. My mother hates anything sweet. So I told Rosie to refrain from baking any desserts. 
Rosie said that she wanted to bake something because it's what she does best when it comes to the kitchen. I told her to look up a recipe on Google. She was quiet, and about an hour later, I come downstairs because I could smell something sweet, and I found Rosie piping macaron batter. I freaked out. I started yelling about how I told her specifically not to make anything sweet because this was her one chance to get on my mother's good side, and I feel like she only made the dessert to be petty. She got upset and told me not to raise my voice at her and that she wasn't doing it to be petty. She just doesn't care what my mother thinks of her and that my mother's not the only guest at the dinner party. I got frustrated and made the mistake of telling her to stay home instead and she told me that she would and that she now wouldn't go no matter what even if I changed my mind. I regret telling her that because if she doesn't go my mother will really not like her. But am I the jerk for telling her not to bake something sweet? No, I don't think OP's the jerk for saying, hey, you shouldn't bake something sweet. But if they really want to, and they frankly don't care what OP's mom thinks, well, they might have a disagreement as far as what OP thinks they should do. But it's not worth a blow up and an argument and a direct attack like, well, maybe you should just stay home then. It's clearly not OP's intent and prerogative, but in an indirect way, it's kind of like OP is playing mama boy, trying to get their partner to walk on eggshells when going to a party. Our next story is from throwaway72828292292. Am I the jerk for getting matching tattoos of my best friend after his girlfriend told me it made her uncomfortable? So basically, I, 19-year-old female, have been best friends with Devin, 20-year-old male, since we were teenagers around 13 or 14 years old. We've been extremely close since then, and this friendship means more to me than any other relationship in my life. When we were around 16, he casually said, hey, maybe we should get matching tattoos to remind us that we're always there for each other. And I said it sounded cool, and it wasn't really mentioned again. We were minors, so it wasn't exactly plausible. But recently, we passed a tattoo place, and I joked, Remember when we were younger and we wanted to get matching tattoos? Which led to a discussion leading up to us deciding that we wanted to do it for real. We took a few days to decide on the design. My friend's a graphic designer so she made it for us. But it's basically a light bulb shaped like a heart with the words, I'll be your light, love you always, sort of woven through the image. The light bulb thing is an inside thing between us and we always say love you or I love you so it wasn't anything off-putting. And then, the day before the appointment was scheduled, Devin's girlfriend Bianca came up to me hysterically, saying that we couldn't go through with the tattoos. I'm assuming Devin must have told her. She didn't really give me any room to speak, but she talked a lot about how uncomfortable the idea made her. They'd been in an extremely serious relationship for a while, and he was starting to consider proposal. But I told her that I was still getting the tattoo, as Devin had been an important part of my life for years and meant a lot to me, and the tattoo was our idea together, not just mine. Obviously we went through with it, and it felt really nice for a while, until Bianca called me and started freaking out. Apparently I'm a horrible person and the tattoo was too romantic, even though it was not, we're just extremely close friends. I'm sure she has friends she would say I love you too, it's not a big deal. But now she's saying she wants it to be removed, and I really don't know what to do. Because on one hand, I don't want to be responsible for ruining Devin's relationship and possible marriage. But on the other hand, I don't want to get rid of the tattoo. This is a really weird situation, honestly, and I can only go from how I would personally feel. And I would say personally, both sides are the jerks here. For OP to say, oh, this heart-shaped light bulb that says, I'll be your light, love you always, is not romantic at all. I just wouldn't be able to have those words said to my face and take it seriously. Intent or not, that is a very romantic looking tattoo. That's the kind of we've been married for 10 years and we're doubling down on the commitment type tattoo. On the other side, Devin might be a bit of a jerk for getting that tattoo when it clearly upsets their partner so much. And their partner is also kind of a jerk for outright going and just demanding that you get it removed. I don't know what to think here, honestly. It's all kinds of mixed up and weird vibes. What do you guys think? Is OP the jerk here? Is everybody the jerk? I'd like to know what you guys think because this could be really touchy depending on what angle you come from. This next story is from TAIOP. Am I the jerk for having an operation in the same week as my work colleague's wedding causing my manager to cancel her time off? 
I'm in my late 20s and work in a large retail chain. I have a work colleague, Candace, 22 to 23 year old female, who's planning on getting married later this month. Originally, she was planning the wedding for 2020. However, due to lockdowns, etc., it had to be postponed to 2022. She's booked two weeks off for her wedding and for her honeymoon nearly two years in advance, and everything is paid for. Me and Candace work in the same store section, White Goods. Now, I had bad eyesight as long as I can remember myself and was finally able to save for an operation. Upon the checkup, the doctor said the operation must happen sooner rather than later. They explained that they can see a small rupture in one of my eyes and they're worried that if I fall down or hit my head or due to stress, it'll become worse and they won't be able to fix it, which would make me uneligible for an operation. Due to this, the operation was scheduled for the time of Candace's wedding. When I've told my boss that I'll need two weeks off for the same week, they declined my request saying it's too short notice. And Candace already booked it off, so us two can't be off at the same time. I had to go through the doctor to have a note stating I'll be having an operation and due to recovery will not be able to work for those two weeks. And legally, it is not something my boss can decline. Because of this, and since Candace's wedding is more than two weeks away, he cancelled her holiday request. She can't get any refunds at such short notice, and she said she'll take unpaid leave in this case. However, our boss said he won't be granting her any leave as we're understaffed. Someone started their maternity leave recently, and if she won't show up, then they'll treat it as an unauthorized absence, which will lead to dismissal. During our shift, Candace had a go at me and called me a massive jerk for scheduling the operation during her wedding and getting signed off, making her even more stressed before the wedding. Some other colleagues believe I'm in the wrong too and should have chosen different dates. Am I the jerk? I think OP is clearly not the jerk here. If anybody should be mad at anybody, Candace should be mad at their work. Honestly, the fact that they can go and just uncancel a holiday that you've already got scheduled off is kind of ridiculous. I don't know if OP shared what their deal is with Candace, but if Candace knows that OP has a very serious and urgent and critical eye surgery coming up that just can't be ignored for an extra couple weeks because it might permanently impact their vision otherwise, then Candace would be a major piece of work. This next story is from Throw RA Economy 550. Am I the jerk for returning home after I found out that my husband booked first class for him and his friend while I got economy? My husband and I, 30s, haven't been on a trip out of country for years, while he goes every year with his best friend. His reasons for going with him is because they both go to attend sporting events. This year, my husband told me I could go with him and his friend since they were visiting a new destination. He paid for my ticket and everything else since I'm a stay-at-home mom and have no job. The kids were left with my mom. However, when I found out that he had booked first class for himself and his friend while I got economy, I just couldn't hold my tongue. I confronted him about it and he at first refused to discuss. Then when the argument got heated, he yelled, I paid for your ticket for freak's sake, isn't that enough? Then kept on about how I should stop acting like I was royalty and that if I come to think about it, even economy is fine for me since I technically don't work anyway. I cried because of what he said, but decided to just not go all together. He changed his tone and started begging me to just go with what he planned, but I declined. I went to pick the kids up from my mom's house and he came back three hours later huffing and buffing about what happened. His friend sent me a text calling me entitled and said this was the reason why he didn't want my husband to take me with them and I just proved his point. I didn't respond but I blocked him since he's gotten increasingly rude over the past few months. He, my husband, said I kept crying about being excluded and this is what happens when he finally decides to include me. Am I the jerk for not settling for economy? By the way, he's perfectly capable of financing the trip. How can you even call it being included if you don't even sit together in the plane? And let me guess, when they get there, he and his friend are going to take the hotel room and she's going to get the Motel 6 back down the road a ways, right? I don't know if it's too far of me, but I would start questioning if there's something more going on between those two friends. Especially considering the friend's behavior afterwards where they keep texting you and calling you entitled. It just seems overly defensive and something that might be motivated by other reasons. Our next story is from Shift Dry 9280 Am I the jerk for cutting my portion sizes in half at the dinner table after being served heaping portions by my mom? 
Growing up, my family and I were all fat. They never taught me about good nutrition, portion sizes, and the only exercise I got was gym class. So, of course, I was used to all this, right? Especially since a lot of my friends were the same. When I went to college, I was exposed to a lot of new things. And I learned quickly that my family's habits weren't healthy. For years, they always said the weight was genetic. When I'd go to lunch with my friend group at the dining hall, I started noticing that my portion sizes were huge against theirs. I cut down my portions and I would join them doing yoga and stuff. Naturally, I ended up losing some weight, like size 22 to tight size 12. I really like the way I look. You can see my collarbones. But I ended up having to go back home during summer break. And I have been surprised at just how different I feel for my family. When we would order pizzas two years ago, we would basically get our own and it would be gone that night. We had pizza night when I got home and I ate two slices and that was it. Last week, my mom made her special lasagna. I made a size salad to go with it. She always plates the meals and then sets a big dish in the middle so we can have more. Well, the piece she gave me was way too big, so I cut it in half and served myself more salad. My sister immediately got on my case about how rude that was to mom because she worked so hard on the lasagna. I said I couldn't eat that much food in one sitting, and she scoffed and said that didn't used to be a problem. I said yes, but if you can't tell, things have changed a little. She got on my face and said that I brought my college BS home with me and I should have left it at the door and ate like a normal person. I told her that I was eating like a normal person, that everyone I knew at school eats like this and that we're the abnormality, that it's not normal to be so stuffed at the table you're in pain. My brother chimed in saying that I'd just gain the weight back, so stop pretending that I'm better than they are, but I don't think I am at all. I'm no better than anyone, but I also don't think I'm wrong for sticking to smaller portions instead of being stuffed all the time. Am I the jerk? Well, no wonder everybody in that family is overweight. If somebody actually tries to be healthy, they pass their insecurities on to them and basically make it such a negative thing to even bring a health-focused attitude into that household. I would hate to hear what that family has to say when you ask them about vegans or vegetarians. Their entire existence is probably a huge joke to those kinds of people. Our next story is from Otherwise Job 8545. Am I the jerk for telling my ex-husband I won't babysit my daughter? My ex-husband and I divorced about four years ago. I've taken a couple of vacations with the kids since the divorce. He went on one trip with them, which was canceled after one day due to a hurricane. He makes a lot of snide remarks about how much I pay for the vacations, but I live a pretty frugal life and my kids are my splurge. We have 50-50 custody and neither of us pay child support. My ex has family in Texas. They live on a lake with an in-ground pool and a boat. They're close with him. He has a standing invite. The trip would cost my ex a flight, probably one or two meals out. My ex seems to be buying a new truck, bought a one wheel, joined a golf club, and makes solid money. I don't think he's hurting and I don't begrudge him any of it. I just wish he'd take my two kids on the vacation they desperately want with him. But I respect that he has every right to spend his money how he wants to. Here's where it gets weird. Monday, he asked me what I'm doing for Labor Day, which, according to our divorce agreement, is his holiday with the kids. I don't have plans, so he asked if I could babysit, I roll, my daughter so he can take my son to Texas. I asked why he wasn't going to take my daughter, and he said the trip is my son's birthday present, and if my daughter asks to go to Texas for her birthday, he'll take her alone. My kids are close, and if asked, I know my son wouldn't want to go without his sister. I told him I didn't want to put the kids in that position, and he should ask his girlfriend, lives with them, been together four years, stays with the kids when he travels for work, to just stay at home with her. But apparently she's going on the trip too. I told him it was playing favorites and I wouldn't enable it, and he blew up on me. We have a history of him being abusive, so I know I can be very quick to jump to conclusions and get protective of my kids. I know this would hurt my daughter, but maybe I'm overreacting? He called me controlling and I'm trying to decide if he has any basis for that statement. Note, if he books the trip without her, I will 100% watch her and he knows it. I think OP is not the jerk here. I've never been a parent, but I feel like if you have two kids, especially two kids that are very close, both in age and relationship, 
Taking only one of them definitely gives a favoritism feel, whether you like it or not. And frankly, I think it's weird to just take one kid. I know it's their birthday, but why would you not want to give both of your kids that experience? What motivation or reasoning do they have to leave one kid home? They just don't want to take care of two kids? Favoritism? You be the judge. Our next story is from I'm a 35 year old white man. Am I the jerk for saying it's disgusting to shower twice a week? For context, my boyfriend's sister was complaining to me that her boyfriend has stinky skin you know where. We're quite close and I never repeat this stuff to her brother. And I asked her if he cleans under it when he showers, to which she said yes. And then I asked her how many times he showers, to which she said twice a week. Personally, I shower once a day. Maybe I'll miss the occasional day in a week if I'm really tired, but it's usually only a day. To this I said, oh, that's disgusting. Twice a week is nowhere near enough. And then she got super offended and hurt because she also only showers twice a week. Because she wants to preserve the natural oils on her skin. I tried to backtrack to keep the peace, but she knows it's BS and now she won't talk to me. She's been off with me for a few days and I can't even discuss why with my boyfriend because how am I supposed to tell him his beloved sister has a boyfriend with a stinky you know what? Am I the jerk for this? I'm not sure if I should apologize to her. In all honesty, she doesn't smell but I still think the twice a week rule is ridiculous because you still get that buildup of sweat and dirt and I don't think washing twice a week is sustainable to keep it off. I think OP's reaction does make them the jerk here It's something that I think they should go to her and apologize and say all their life they did it a certain way and they had a misconception about if it's really enough and they apologize for upsetting them. The bottom line is it depends really on the person how much you can shower and stay properly clean. Honestly, the boyfriend probably could shower twice a week and still stay clean if they did some additional hygiene practices for some, you could say, hot zones. I mean, the bottom line is it clearly works for her at least. And nobody likes to feel like they're judged like that. So I think it's at least worth an apology. Our next story is from Angry and Tired 11. Am I the jerk for kicking strangers out of my mom's hospice room at 1 a.m.? My mother's currently in hospice. I flew across the country to be with her till the end. I have an older sister that lives with my mother. When I got here, my sister said that she had a friend that would like to visit my mom, but didn't have transportation. My mom said she wanted to see him, so I drove 30 minutes an hour and 10 minutes round trip to get this man and bring him back. When I got there, I found out that his husband was also coming. Both these men were strangers to me, but I did it so he could see my mom one last time. The plan we agreed on was I would take them home at 8 p.m. because I had to pick up our other sister from the airport, and they were on the way. When the time came to leave, the man and his husband had some sort of emotional meltdown and didn't want to leave my mother. I told them that I didn't have time to deal with their drama because I had to get to the airport, so I just left. When I made it back to the hospice with my other sister, it was 1am. The two of us walked in and there were now four people and our oldest sister in the room. Our mom was sleeping but they were laughing, joking and watching a loud video on someone's phone. I asked who the new people were and a woman said she and her boyfriend were here as emotional support for my mom's friend. They just showed up to surprise him. What the freak, it's 1am and these people didn't know my mother or our family. My mother's never liked many men around her, so there was no way she would be okay with three strangers watching her on her deathbed. My oldest sister didn't see anything wrong with them being here. I was so furious because that was just the most disrespectful thing I had ever seen. They were not family, nor were they here to support our family. I was so furious that I told everyone to shut up and leave. I was so enraged and I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was not nice. My oldest sister went out in the lobby sobbing and made a huge commotion. She went on a rant about how our mom loved this friend and how she saved him from a bad situation. We all almost got kicked out of hospice for disturbing the other patients. Thankfully, the staff agreed with me and allowed myself and the sister I just picked up to stay. Everyone else had to leave. I received a text shortly after, telling me how awful I was for kicking them out. My oldest sister also said I was in the wrong because our mother wanted an Irish wake. We're not Irish and she's not dead yet. You don't let strangers have a party in her hospice room at 1am. So am I the jerk? 
The bottom line here I think is OP was looking out for their mom and solely their mom. So I don't think they can be the jerk here as much as everybody else would try to make OP the bad guy for kicking them out. Frankly, all of these people that have to be kicked out probably aren't going to be thinking of OP nicely anyways. Our next story is from AITA Bridesmaid Drama. Am I the jerk for kicking the bridesmaid off my destination wedding the day before the event? This happened a while ago, but the person involved reached out for an apology from me, yet I don't believe I did anything wrong. Short background, I have a best friend Naya, who's black and comes from one of the least developed countries in Central Africa. I've known and loved her for many years, so when planning my wedding, I didn't have any doubts that she'll be my maid of honor. I invited another girl, Jane, who I knew for not that long, but we were quite close, to be one of my bridesmaids. Due to all my friends living in different countries, Naya and Jane only met for the first time the day before my wedding, which they both traveled to attend. This night before the wedding, we had a lovely time with the girls. But then Jane started to ask Naya really strange questions. Like, do they really eat insects and live in huts? Which was, yes, strange, but also can be seen as a curiosity of another country. But as the evening progressed, Jane's behavior did as well. Jane ended up telling Naya a story about some beggar she had seen, referring to him by the N-word. That's when I decided to intervene got Jane in private, and asked what in the world thought she could talk like this, let alone to Naya. She became defensive and quoted, Naya's not the N-word, she's so pretty and clean, I was talking about that guy. After telling her off and explaining what kind of racist butt she is, in much ruder form, I asked her to leave and to not show up at my wedding, as well as never talk to me again. Last night she reached out expecting the apology and a payback for the flight she took for my wedding which I really doubt I should do as I'm still very angry with her. I don't want to discuss it with my friends, so please Reddit, tell me if I'm the jerk. OP's not the jerk. OP saved every single person that had to associate with them some serious time. If OP at their wedding ever has a thought of Jane come across their mind, that should only serve to make them laugh and enjoy the night even more because they're not there. And our final story of the day is from TA Drink Drama. Am I the jerk for making my son walk home after he was in the hospital? I'm female. My son Jay, 19 year old male, is staying home from college. I know my son goes to parties, drinks, like someone innocent his age. So every time he goes out, I ask him not to overdo it and not to drive if he drinks. He usually does what I ask. Saturday there was a graduation party at a college in my town, and he got an invite to the party. Since I knew he was going to drink, I confiscated his keys and he took the Uber to the party, always giving him the same warning not to overdo it. Around 6am, I didn't pay attention to the time because it's very common for him to sleep unannounced at friends' houses. I got a call saying that Jay was hospitalized and I went into despair, speeding to the hospital by car. When I arrived, they informed me that he had an alcoholic coma and luckily there was no sequel. I preferred not to scold him but I admit I was frustrated and disappointed by his inconsequentiality. So after he was discharged from the hospital, I asked him if he could walk. He said yes, and asked the doctor if there was any problem with him walking. He said he just has to go a little slow. We left the hospital, and I told him he would have to walk home, two kilometers away, because if he was old enough to go into an alcoholic coma, he's able to get home by himself. And I left him there. It wasn't dark but I could hear him complaining and saying it was unfair. He arrived 40 minutes later, complaining to the walls about how cruel I was in making him walk after he was in the hospital, and that he can't ask for an Uber because he had lost his cell phone. He was with his friend. My husband, not his father, the father agrees with me, said that I was pretty hard on him and that maybe it wasn't the best way to deal with it. Am I the jerk? My son's fully capable of walking two kilometers. He's already walked six to kiss a girl. I think OP is pretty clearly the jerk here. I fully understand wanting to have some kind of reprimand for your kid being so reckless, but honestly, I'm of the opinion that this is the one situation where you need to put that aside and just show them that you're fully there to support them and help them. 
I fully subscribe to the belief that parents should do the free pass method, where you basically sit your kid down and say, listen, I know you're probably going to get in trouble. If there's a situation where things are going haywire, you're in some deep stuff, I don't care what, contact me, I'll get you, no questions asked, no trouble. Because the idea is, them being scared enough to contact you in that situation is probably punishment enough and enough of a learning lesson. OP son here ending up in the hospital like this? I feel like that should serve as lesson enough. I feel like the poor 19 year old kid has experienced enough and forcing them to walk 2 kilometers home on top of everything is just a bit ridiculous. Am I the jerk for cutting off support to my daughter? I, 52-year-old male, have three children with my ex Tracy, 50-year-old female, Michael, 28-year-old male, Linda, 25-year-old female, and Victoria, 23-year-old female. We split because Tracy had an affair with Stan, a 55-year-old male, to whom she's now married. We never shared with the kids the reason for the divorce, as I don't want them to blame either of us. This backfired as the kids saw their mom move out of the house into a small apartment and me keep living in the house and remarry two years after the divorce. So they saw me as the bad guy. Stan and Tracy let them pretty much do whatever they wanted, and I had to be the disciplinarian who made sure homework was done, appointments were made, and deadlines were met. My two oldest eventually came to realize that I wasn't the bad guy. My son, when he found out that his mother had put nothing away for college for him, as outlined in our divorce decree, and she told him to take out loans. My daughter, when she realized that her grades were going to keep her out of her desired program in school. My youngest never came around, so it was a surprise when her boyfriend asked for my blessing to ask for her hand. When I expressed that I didn't think she'd care about my blessing, he said she insisted on it. She began spending time with me, being polite to my wife, and it felt wonderful to have my daughter back. I went with them to book the venue, and they'll be getting married next summer. I pay the deposit in the first installment. I noticed that she was becoming less communicative again recently, ignoring my texts or giving one word replies, and not coming over as much. On Monday, my son sent me a post from Instagram. My youngest had an engagement party this weekend, to which I was not invited. One of the photos was with her and Stan and it read, anyone can be a father. It takes a real man to be a dad. This amazing guy has been my dad for 15 years, even though he didn't have to be. I am so blessed to have him walk me down the aisle next year. Hashtag daddy's girl. Hashtag future Mrs. X. My kids wanted for nothing their entire lives because I never let them go without. Even when they wouldn't talk to me, I made sure their needs were met. I texted Tracy to ask why I wasn't included. She replied that Victoria didn't want my wife there because she wanted a drama free day. My wife has literally never started drama in her life. I asked if Stan and I would both be walking her down the aisle. Tracy didn't respond, but Victoria called me up, demanding to know what my problem was. I repeated my question, and she replied that no, Stan, her dad, would be walking her down the aisle. I told her that if that's what she wanted, I would be fine with it. I told her to let Stan know the next payment for the wedding is due in November. Stan and Tracy don't have the money for this wedding, and think I'm being the jerk. Linda says if I do this, Victoria will never speak to me again. Michael's on my side. I'm gonna be honest, it might be petty, but I think it's time to tell them the truth about the situation here and OP's feelings about how they felt cut off when all along they never just wanted to make anybody the bad guy. I don't think they're the jerk either way for cutting off the funds when they're not even being invited and are being basically outcasted by their own kid. Especially when, apparently, from what OP said, they've never acted in a way that deserves being outcasted. It almost feels like there's something wrong here, because why is somebody who loves and supports their kid being pushed away like this? Also, it's pretty clear they used OP for the money. What do you guys think? After everything, is it finally time to explain to the kids why the divorce happened and explaining that OP was not the bad guy in that decision? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Hidden Concert. Would I be the jerk for not sending a gift for a wedding I wasn't invited to? My cousin Ted and I are close in age, a few years apart. We were always close as kids and even into adulthood, still kept in touch. Then Ted met Maddie a few years ago and started bringing her to family stuff. I don't have a problem with Maddie, but we just didn't click. 
We talk at family stuff, but she's not someone I want to hang out with or become friends with. My other cousin, Ted's sister, really clicked with Maddie, which cool and good for them, but I just don't. I'm nice and polite, but I don't go out of my way to become her bestie. My aunt, Ted's mom, really pushed her on me though. I don't know if it's because we're the same age-ish or what, but it was annoying. Anytime we were both at an event, she'd find some way to push us together. I felt like a little kid being forced to play with someone. My own college graduation party, grandparents had it because they have a bigger house and yard, had to be moved because Maddie had to work, and it wouldn't be nice to exclude her. Even though it was inconvenient for me and meant most of my friends couldn't come and I had to rush around. Anyway, like I said, I've never been rude or anything to her, just never really bonded with her. So Ted and Maddie are getting married soon. I knew he was engaged, but I didn't know where the wedding was when it was. Another family member asked what I was getting them for a wedding gift, and I said, I don't know. They said, better figure it out before wedding date, which is very soon. I said, oh, I didn't know, I wasn't invited. They said, well, maybe it's not personal, you should still get a gift for them. I asked my dad when he got his invitation, and I guess it was a while ago. I said it's crappy that I wasn't invited when I had to reschedule my party for them. He said that was a graduation party. This is a wedding. Now that you know about it, just be a bigger person and get a gift. Don't be petty. I don't want to buy them a gift, and I probably won't invite Ted to any future events I have. I don't know why I was left out when everyone else in the family was invited. Maybe because I'm the only cousin on this side. Maybe it's a budget thing. And not personal, but I don't want to spend the money on a gift when I wasn't cool enough to invite. To me, it's like having a birthday party and expecting someone I didn't invite to send me a birthday present. Am I the jerk if I don't send a gift? I am of the opinion that if you are not invited, you are not welcomed into that ceremony, you don't have to send a gift. I think OP's analogy is great. If you throw a birthday party and you don't invite somebody, you don't expect a gift from them. Send a nice card or something, but you don't have to get them anything crazy. Our next story is from Imaginary Agency 991. Am I the jerk for not wanting to be a stay-at-home mom? Okay, I already know it sounds bad, but I, 35-year-old female, and my husband Jeff, 37-year-old male, are currently expecting a boy. His first child, my second. I got pregnant with my first when I was 18, and his dad was never in the picture. I work as a substance abuse counselor, and I love my job. This is where it gets tricky. My job offered me 8 weeks PTO for when I have our son. I've been so happy because I didn't want to go right back to work soon. Me and Jeff got together when I turned 30 and he moved in with me because I own my house. We just got married this year and have talked about childcare multiple times, so he knows I don't want to be a stay at home mom. Well, I'm due in November and he just brought the idea up. I was very confused because we've already talked about this, but I guess my mother-in-law and sister-in-law believe I should stay home with our son as a mother and wife. I just don't understand where their opinions come in because I already know where they stand. Both of them stayed home with the kids. All three of them sat me down to have this talk and they want me to focus on the kids, cleaning up the house, making dinner and all of that, but I already work and do those things. Well, mother-in-law wanted to throw it in my face that I never got to be a stay-at-home mom because I was a single mom going to school and working. Which, she's not wrong, but it definitely made me pissed that she brought it up. I told them that I worked so hard to give my son a good life, and having another baby doesn't change my decision to keep doing something that I absolutely love doing. And if they all want someone to take care of the house and kids all day, then Jeff should be a stay-at-home dad because I make more money than him, and it would make more sense for him to stay home instead of me. It turned absolutely horrible after that. I got yelled at by mother-in-law and sister-in-law that it's not his role as a father to do those things, that he's the man of the house and should be the one making the money. Jeff just stood there not saying anything and I blew up and reminded all of them that it's my house, not his. I kicked mother-in-law and sister-in-law out, and Jeff is so mad at me that he went with them. He said he won't come back till I apologize to all three of them. So am I the jerk for not wanting to be a stay-at-home mom? I don't think OP's the jerk for not wanting to be a stay-at-home mom. I think what matters is, can you make it work? If you can make it work where you go to work and you still take care of your kids, then that's more than fine. I don't see why you have to do that. 
You don't have to be stuck in the 1950s nuclear family role. Our next story is from Puppy AITA. Am I the jerk for not taking a conversation about parenthood with my wife seriously? This sounds ridiculous because it is. I, 27 year old male, don't want children. I've never wanted children. My wife Liz, 26 year old female, is aware of this. I'm in the camp of, if it's not a resounding, I want this with my entire heart and soul, yes, then it's a no. I think kids are cool and wonderful and major sources of joy in life. Do I want to be responsible for raising one? Nope. Prior to getting engaged about a year and a half ago, I lived with my best friend, 28 year old male, and had done so for nearly a decade of my life. He and I each adopted a dog while living together and call each other co-parents. We have doggy playdates on the regular and I'm over at his place multiple times a week because of this. This morning my wife brought up children. Like I said, she's aware of the fact that I don't want them. Her sister recently gave birth to our niece and while looking at the photos Liz said, wouldn't it be nice if we had a baby or something along those lines? I responded with, I'm already the co-parent of two babies and I don't have room for any more. She got angry at me and said I wasn't taking her or the concept of parenthood seriously. I told her I have no reason to take this conversation or the concept of our parenthood seriously because we are never having kids. Am I the jerk? I think OP is not the jerk here and there might need to be a sit down conversation at some point because very clearly OP expressed they don't want kids, they want a kidless life. And if this is something that OP's wife is going to secretly be longing for, it's better to put that out on the table and have it in the know, rather than bottle that up and have something brewing that is just kind of ignored. This next story is from Poppy Field 02390. Am I the jerk for saying I won't make part of my family's lunches anymore? I, 37 year old female, have four children and a husband. All my children are school age, 5, 7, 10, and 13, and my husband is 39. I make all of their lunches for the next day for them. It's usually a PB&J, chips and crackers, and a yogurt every day. It's cheap, easy, and they all like it. Sometimes if we have takeout or pizza or something the night before, and the member didn't finish their portion, they'll get it in their lunch the next day. This is especially the case for my 7-year-old, who doesn't eat much at once, and will likely be the case for my 5-year-old, as she eats the same way. Additionally, sometimes I'll use a different jelly or crunchy peanut butter with the creamy or use honey instead of jelly or sub and use a turkey and cheese. Plus, the side is switched up regularly and the yogurt flavor is always different. So there's a lot of variety within a sandwich side and a yogurt. With that being said, I understand that having the same thing over and over can get boring. If I'm asked to sub an item and I can, I will. This is when my oldest started complaining about lunches being boring in that complaining tone kids use. I wasn't hurt. I asked what he would like instead and he shrugged and said, something not boring. At this point, my husband and second oldest joined, echoing the sentiment with no solutions. At this point, I was nearly crying, which I don't do in front of my kids, but hearing my husband say these things without any solutions hurt. I said, fine. If they find my lunches so boring, then they don't have to eat them, and I won't make them anymore. That they're all welcome and old enough to make their own lunches, and I'll just make them for my two youngest. Or my oldest kids can simply get school lunches, something they've been vehemently against, saying the meals are gross, as I know those menus are different every day, and that will offer some variety. They immediately backtracked on their statements, but I stood firm. They're all old enough to make their own lunch. Just tell me if you decide you need lunch money. My older kids grumbled, but they managed to make their own sandwiches. My husband was the biggest child of them all, complaining that the kids have the option of school lunch, that the school can't and won't let a kid go hungry, but work doesn't give a freak if he eats or not. I just kissed his cheek, inside there's bread and peanut butter in the kitchen. Not to mention he can drive to McDonald's and get something he wants. He continued to get angry and slept in the basement last night. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk because they're just looking for a little appreciation here, right? Here they are doing stuff that honestly they don't have to do and a lot of parents make their kids make their own lunch and they're just dumping on their parent and not providing any solutions. Listen, if you want a fruit roll up every day, just mention it. 
If that's what makes it not boring, if you want a Capri Sun, give them something that they can do to make it not boring, rather than just say, ah, what do you make is boring. This next story is from Silly Mouse. Am I the jerk for refusing to give my window seat to someone's kid? Months ago, I booked a JetBlue flight from San Francisco to New York City and realized I accumulated enough points over the years to purchase a first class seat for free. I had the option to pick my seat and I always choose the window. Even when I'm flying economy, I always pay the extra fee to select seats in advance for one, to ensure I'm not kicked off when it's overbooked later and two, simply because I like the window seat. I'm a geography nerd and enjoy looking out the window. Anyway, the day of the flight comes, and a woman and her two kids are assigned next to me in the first class cabin. The lady asked me if I could switch seats so her kid could have the window. If this was economy, I would probably switch so the kid could have the window, even though I would be miffed since I had selected it in advance and the mother didn't. However, I don't get to fly first class very often, and was looking forward to this flight. So I simply said, no, sorry. The kid threw a fit. The mother gave me a glare and pretty much tried to guilt trip me into switching, but I just ignored her. I might be a jerk for refusing to give my first class window seat to a kid, but at the same time, every passenger has the option to choose their seats in advance. And if she wanted the window seat for her kid, she should have reserved it in advance. Plus her kids are flying first class. Some people never get to fly first class in their lifetime. My friend thinks I'm the jerk, so I'm turning to you, Reddit. Am I the jerk? I think OP is absolutely not the jerk. I think if you pay for a seat, you deserve to get that seat, darn it. Good charity, bad charity, I don't care. Sorry, kid, your mom doesn't love you enough to buy the window seat. Also, guys, now is the best time to ask, what is the best seat on an airplane? Window, middle, or aisle? because I am a staunch window believer, but I know not everybody agrees, let me know. This next story is from Not My House, AITA. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay rent to my boyfriend's mortgage if I move in with him? My boyfriend, 33-year-old male, and I, 29-year-old female, have been dating for three years. He owns a house and lives there by himself. I live in an apartment by myself. We've talked about moving in together, as that's the logical next step in our relationship, and we both want to do it but I have some hangups related to moving into a house that I don't have any stake in. I'm refusing to pay any money that would go directly towards his mortgage. I don't have any stake in the house. Why would I contribute to his mortgage payments? I'm okay helping with utilities, groceries, household items, etc., but paying his mortgage is a hard no for me. I just don't think it makes any sense for me to pay towards his mortgage when I would get nothing from that if we were to break up. His argument is that I would essentially be living with him for free and it would cause an uneven dynamic in our payment towards shared living expenses, which I kind of get. But at the same time, he's the one benefiting from paying down the mortgage and gaining equity, not me. He also argued that his mortgage is pretty much exactly what I was paying in rent. So by cutting that in half, I'm saving a lot of money on living costs compared to living on my own. Which, yeah, that's nice too, but legally, it's still not my house. I told him the only way I would pay money for rent is if he signs a contract with me, stating that any money I pay towards his mortgage will be paid back to me by him in the event that we break up. It would also allow me protection from eviction and other basic tenant rights, similar to a rental agreement. He's refusing to sign anything like that because, in his words... I could break up with him for no reason and then take him to court for thousands of dollars. Which I suppose is true, but I wouldn't just break up with him for no reason. The whole situation is driving a wedge between us and he's pissed at me for being so difficult when all he thinks he's asking is that we split living expenses 50-50 if we are to live together. To me, it's not that simple when he's the one owning the house we would live in. If I were on the title, it would be a different story but he's not willing to put me on the title because he's lived there for seven years already. My lease at my apartment is up in two months and I know I need to make a decision sooner than later. It doesn't help that my landlord's going to be increasing my rent and similar apartments in our area are going for even more than I'm currently paying. But I just don't feel right contributing money towards his mortgage. I also know that if I renew my lease, it's pretty much a dagger to our relationship. 
which I don't want because I do love him and see a future with him. I just want to make sure I'm protected. I can tell my boyfriend's patience on this is wearing thin and he's upset with me for digging my heels in on this. But for me, this is about protecting myself for the worst case scenario while he's not really risking anything. This next story is from Fluffy Strain 6713 Am I the jerk for not wanting to attend a Game of Thrones themed wedding? My friend Lex is getting married soon. She and her husband are extreme Game of Thrones fans. They've watched the show 5 plus times. Their house is decked out with Game of Thrones themed decorations and accessories etc. Because of their shared love of Game of Thrones, Lex and their fiancé decided to have a Game of Thrones themed wedding. I'm perfectly fine with the idea of a themed wedding. I'm even okay with the Game of Thrones dress and costume for the wedding. The only thing I can't seem to get behind is the fact that the majority of the wedding will be conducted in High Valerian. For those who don't know, it's a made up language from Game of Thrones. Her wedding is also a destination wedding, and I'm finding it hard to justify going out of my way to go to a wedding that's not even in a real language that I won't be able to understand. Am I the jerk if I don't go? I mentioned that I was having doubts to Lex and she got really mad at me because I originally had said I could go before I knew it was in High Valerian. She's also been sending me links to learn High Valerian on Duolingo and I feel like even if I did show up, she would be mad at me for not learning it. I think OP's not the jerk, not necessarily because of the High Valerian thing, but just because they're not really obligated to attend any wedding. Especially a destination wedding, it's much easier to just say it's just unrealistic to make it. You can give them all your love, all the best, and just simply not go. You're not forced to go. Our next story is from Crab Legs and Prime. Am I the jerk for telling daughter I'm disappointed in her and won't take her out to a second restaurant? My daughters, 14 and 16, are on the same dance team. Their team won a competition on Sunday, and we were all so excited and proud of them. After the competition, my dad suggested we go out to eat and said he would pay for wherever we wanted. Older daughter, who loves seafood, has been asking for years to go to a restaurant that has unlimited crab legs. But it is a very pricey restaurant, so we've never been able to. She immediately suggested this restaurant. My dad liked the suggestion. My younger daughter suggested we go to her favorite restaurant, a local Mexican restaurant instead. We've been there many times as it's much more affordable. Knowing this would be a wasted opportunity, I said older daughter's suggestion made more sense because it was somewhere we'd never been. Younger daughter complained that she wouldn't like anything there, but I assured her the menu would have more than crab legs. We got there, and sure enough, there were many dishes that didn't have seafood, including steak, the youngest's favorite. Even though there were dishes without seafood, youngest daughter said she wasn't hungry because the restaurant smelled weird. I ordered her steak anyway. Younger daughter pouted throughout the meal. She picked at her steak. Older daughter was very happy and completely absorbed in the crab legs. My mom tried to talk to my younger daughter about the competition, but she wasn't responsive. At the end of the meal, we were all stuffed except for the youngest. My dad told everyone to pick a dessert to go, except for the youngest because she's clearly not hungry. I asked my dad to leave her alone and he did, but she was already upset. When we got home I tried to talk to her. I explained that this was a rare opportunity and sometimes we need to let someone else have something nice. I told her I could have taken us to the Mexican restaurant this weekend. She said it's not the same because the restaurant we go to the night of the competition is special and we went somewhere she didn't like. I pointed out that she didn't know she didn't like it because she didn't try it. She said I know she hates seafood and that the restaurant's known for its seafood, so of course she wouldn't want to go there after a special event. She was annoyed all Monday and Tuesday but started to mellow on Wednesday. This morning she asked if we're going to the Mexican restaurant tomorrow. I said not this week because of her behavior, but we'll see next week. She wasn't happy. Am I being too hard on her? I think she was very rude to her grandparents, but I know when you're a teenager, everything feels like a bigger deal than it is. Should I have just let her behavior slide and taken her to the Mexican restaurant? I'm definitely not a parenting expert, 
but I think OP is not the jerk here, and I think what they've done here is actually really good. I'm of the opinion that you should not enable that kind of behavior at all, unless you want to foster a kid that grows up to be pouty and complaining and moody for multiple days just so they can get what they want. You don't want to condition a kid who's just coming into their own to ever repeat that kind of behavior. Even when they're done being moody, that doesn't mean everybody else moves along with them. Our next story is from Beauty Songstorm. Am I the jerk for telling my mom her stepdaughter is possessive and she needs to do better to keep her away from me? My mom married Jeff when I was six years old. My dad died two months earlier, but my parents were divorced at the time. Jeff and his daughter Emma lived in another state, and all four of us moved to a new place to start over. I met Jeff and Emma two weeks after my dad died. Mom made a fast move because she now could with dad not able to stop her. Right from the get-go, Emma's been clingy, possessive, and kinda a little creepy too. I didn't like her from the first day we met because she told me Jeff was my dad now and that I needed to learn how to be a family with them because she wanted a sister and a mom. It upset me so bad because I was missing my dad. He wasn't gone that long and I had this strange girl telling me to replace him already. I told her that her dad wasn't my dad and I missed my dad. She told me she didn't care and things were different. I went to my mom, who told me to give Emma and Jeff a chance, and said Emma likely got overexcited. Emma has continuously made life so awkward for me. She insisted we share a bedroom, which my mom and Jeff said yes to despite having a spare bedroom. She started wearing my clothes and telling me I could wear hers. All fine with mom and Jeff. She hated how I kept in touch with my best friend from back home. I hated it even more when a year later, my best friend's family moved nearby and we got to see each other again, versus just talking over the phone. She was rude to her, told her to leave me alone, told me I had to spend time with her instead of my best friend. Emma tore up photos of my dad and told me that he was the past and her and Jeff were the future. She did get into trouble for that, but then I got into trouble for not letting it go. I was nine at the time, I think. Emma tells everyone I'm her sister and we're so close, whereas I'm more honest with people I'm close to and don't hold back on how unhappy I am at home. Over the years, nothing's changed much, only she's far more obsessive now. Jeff doesn't like me because he really doesn't like that I don't consider him my dad. And I'll be honest, I don't think of him as a parental figure even though I know he is. I don't love him and I hate Emma, which he also knows. My mom's talked to me before about being nicer to Emma and to stop pushing her away so much. She got on my case again about it because I wouldn't go to camp with Emma, we're both 16 now by the way, that she wanted to go to that allowed almost like a sibling-like experience. So mom was mad at me and yelled at me and I eventually kind of snapped and told mom that she needed to fix how possessive Emma is and do better by me because I'm her daughter, I lost my dad, and she threw me into such a screwed up dynamic and never cared about what it did to me. I told her at the very least she needs to keep Emma away from me. Mom was mad and said I portrayed Emma like some sort of bad person. She's still mad. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's a jerk here. OP explained it the best when they said that they got tossed into a very tumultuous situation that really any kid at that age going through those circumstances would find it probably very hard to adjust. I'm just left feeling bad for OP. And our final story of the day is from Zmore Wits. Am I the jerk for being angry at my wife for not making a dinner? We have a 10 month old daughter, wife's on parental leave so usually she's taking care of the baby while I work. Then we switch, then in the evening she puts the baby to bed and I spend the night with her. Daughter, as in I feed her, change her, calm her down when she wakes up, etc. Now on Saturday, wife got diagnosed with shingles. So she's quarantined from the baby, as in they don't have any contact at all. She feels 100% fine other than the spots on her back. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we had a public holiday, so no work. I spend 100% with the baby, while wife did various housework. We managed to find a nanny for my work hours for the rest of the weekdays. On a Wednesday, wife comes into my office and room, remote work, and tells me to finish up the dinner as she's going to get her nails done. So I spent an hour in the kitchen making dinner for us and the baby. Nanny stayed a bit longer while I made dinner, then spend the rest of the day taking care of the baby. 
Now, I was pretty angry when she said she didn't have the time to finish the dinner. I mean, I work eight hours, then spend the rest of the time taking care of the baby, and she didn't have the time to make dinner for the baby? Really? Now she's angry at me for getting angry at her, and I wonder whether I was not fair. I think OP's being the jerk in this situation. Could they have gotten the dinner done? Yeah, probably so, but considering the circumstances, considering how tired they have to be, considering the shingles and the constant being a mom, if you gotta make a dinner one day, it might suck, but you don't need to blow up over it. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend she isn't allowed to have kids over at our house? So, basically, just as it sounds, I'm 28-year-old male, my girlfriend Kelly, 26-year-old female, has three siblings. All of them have kids, and she's close with all of them. She has major love for her nieces and nephews. I love that for her, but me, myself, am not a huge fan of kids right now. Eventually, yes, I wouldn't mind having kids, but right now? No, I don't want them around. I bought my house two years ago. Kelly moved in about a year ago. Here's how the financial situation plays out. I pay for all the mortgage and insurance. Kelly contributes groceries, Wi-Fi, utilities, and does most of the cleaning. She cleans because she's a neat freak, not because I ask her to. She just likes to do it. I have it set up this way because I want to be responsible for the mortgage and don't want her paying on it in case we were to break up. So I don't mind contributing triple what she does to the household. My place is very much in my style lots of electronics and sports memorabilia. I have a nice bar with alcohol and wine on it. I also have all my golf and sports equipment displayed. I have nice couches and my place is very modern, not a kid-friendly environment. Recently, Kelly's been bringing her nieces and nephews over. I have a real issue with this. The kids range from 14 to two and I don't want them around my stuff. They could steal my alcohol, break my stuff, and kids are just messy. They're dirty too, and I just don't want them in my space. So I've told Kelly it's simple. Spend as much time with your nieces and nephews as you want. Just can't be inside my house. Go watch them at your siblings. She's saying that's unfair because sometimes her sister asks her to wash her kids when she needs to clean their house up or needs them out of the house. I said to take them to the park or mall or something. Just anywhere but here. She's saying it's her house and she can do what she wants. I said it isn't her house. It's mine, and if she doesn't like the no kids rule, she's free to leave. But I'm not risking my things for the sake of her nieces and nephews. I just know if the kids were to mess crap up, she wouldn't pay me back for it. So she can just go to her family's house to watch them. I've been called the jerk for this. Am I the jerk? I think it's safe to say that OP is the jerk here. And would you guys agree with me when I say it just feels like these two aren't really that compatible? Clearly they both feel very differently on this issue. And I think it's a bit weird for OP to hold, oh this is my house, over their head when they've been living there for a year. And whether or not OP says that they do or don't contribute to the household, the fact that they've been living there for a year, take care of the place, clean up, utilities, Wi-Fi, it's just as much their house too. They might not own it, but I feel like they should have a say in the living situation. OP's gonna hold it over them and say, well, if you don't like it, get out. And maybe that's the right thing to do. Do you guys agree? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is from Final Cream 6177 Am I the jerk for kicking out my maid of honor out of my wedding party because she was being a buzzkill? My 27-year-old female, best friend Kathy, 26-year-old female, is a professional wedding planner and has helped host hundreds of weddings. We've basically grown up together and having a professional also help me with a wedding free of cost was very ideal. I made sure to shower her with gifts to repay her for the help she offered throughout that journey. Now, the wedding's in a month, and in two weeks, it's my bachelorette weekend. Kathy notified me and the other girls of all that she had arranged and which Airbnb she booked, but she said she didn't want to participate, which came as a shock to me because how are you going to plan everything but not participate? The girls told me she had a very valid reason, but it wasn't their story to tell, so I should ask her directly. I asked her, and she replied, Look... You've made some requests for your bachelorette party, and I respect everything you want to do, but there's some things that are off limits for me. 
and some of the stuff, such as the strippers I've booked for you and some other activities, are crossing boundaries regarding me and my own fiancé's relationship. So I made sure to arrange everything perfectly just how you and the girls wanted it to be, but sadly it's not something I want to be involved in. I hope you have the greatest fun. I was truly heartbroken and tried to suck it up, but as the days went by, instead of feeling more at ease with that thought, I got more upset. I tried to talk to her about it to change her mind, but she wasn't having it. She later also said that, just to warn me, that she won't drink any alcohol at the wedding because she doesn't want to get sick, because she's very lightheaded. I got very disappointed, and at that moment I straight up told her, I don't want her as a maid of honor if all she's going to do is be a buzzkill about everything regarding my wedding, and how she can attend as a simple guest. She got very upset and thought it was unfair of me excluding her for these reasons. The rest of my bridesmaids now also believe that I took it too far, and how her skipping the trip for personal or not drinking alcohol is not something that would ruin my wedding and I'm just overreacting. Am I the jerk? I think beyond a shadow of a doubt OP is the jerk here, and it's all about respecting boundaries. The fact alone that this person is comfortable enough going to OP and saying, I fully support you and your wedding and you enjoying everything the way you want it to, it's just a boundary of mine that I don't want to cross. I think you should be thankful that they're even brave enough to say that to you. You're treating your wedding like a college frat and you're kicking them out because they don't want to do any keg stands or something. Honestly, I feel like maybe this friend's too good for OP. This next story is from TA Mama of 3. Am I the jerk for paying first class airfare for my nanny and not my son? Me, female, and my husband, male, had our first child met, 18 year old male, when we were just 17 years old. We weren't in a very good financial situation at first, and it only got better when Matt was 9. Currently, we both work well paying jobs, buy a spacious home, and have our luxuries. We had two more children, 8 year old male and 5 year old female. As we can't stay at home all the time, we hired a nanny, May, 45-year-old female, to take care of the little ones. Matt had a complicated personality change at age 11. We put him in private school and maybe the contact with other teenagers brought out a selfish and elitist side of him. We tried our best to try to improve it, but with the onset of adolescence and stubbornness, it just seemed to get worse. It got better when my husband and I decided that at age 16, he would work part-time so he could start taking financial responsibility, and that seemed to give him a reality check, as we cut our support on his perks. This year, after the worst period of the pandemic, my husband and I decided to go on an international trip, and instead of giving May a vacation at home, we decided that we would take her, not going to work, and pay for everything. I don't live in the US. Matt, on a random day, overheard me talking to my husband that I was planning to pay for a first class seat for May and her son for her to enjoy like we did. He asked why we should do this. We were already paying for everything. Let her go economy class if she can't afford first class. I was shocked. I said that it was mean to say this and that she was an important person for our family who gives up having time for her own child to take care of mine. It's the least I can do. He still stood his ground, so I said if he sees it that way, I said I'd buy him an economy seat and he'd have to turn around and pay for an upgrade for him to see how privileged he is to have parents who can pay. He nodded thinking it was a joke, even though I said it wasn't. As the months went by and I warned him that his ticket was economy, he didn't believe it. On the day of the trip, like a shocked Pikachu, he was startled when he realized I told the truth. He threw a tantrum in the middle of the airport, saying that 10 hours of travel would be very uncomfortable. I just replied, you had 6 months to gather. You've been warned. The flight was okay, but Matt was outraged the entire trip, saying that it was almost torture and that we'd gone too far. My husband agrees with me, but my parents said I went too far doing this. Am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk, one, because they tried earnestly to legitimately warn them, two, flying an economy, yeah, it definitely sucks compared to first class, but it doesn't hurt you, it's not like a torture device, god forbid you don't get the lobster dinner on economy, now you're gonna really suffer, it's torture. Mother, I think you've gone too far, I had to sit with the peasants. This next story is from Restaurant Dinner 49. Am I the jerk for getting mad at my sister for coming to a family dinner with her baby? 
I, 32-year-old male, am engaged to Jesse, 30-year-old female. We've been together for seven years and have been trying for a baby for the past two. Originally, I was planning to propose to her during a family dinner at a Michelin star restaurant, so I paid for 12 people to be there, including her and my families. I made the booking nearly 10 months ago. However, plans have changed and instead I've proposed during one of our holidays as the time felt more right. Two months before the dinner, we find out that Jesse is pregnant. I was beyond happy to hear that, so we decided to use the dinner to announce the pregnancy instead, alongside with talking about wedding preparations. The place is rather high-end, so it has a strict dress code and set of rules to follow. Dinner was yesterday. My sister Emily decided to bring my nephew Kit with her, who is still breastfed and is currently teething. He's six months old. So instead of celebrating Jesse's pregnancy, a lot of people were feeling uncomfortable due to my nephew crying nearly constantly. And the owner of the restaurant at some point asked us to leave since kids were not allowed and my nephew was disturbing the other guests. I had no choice but to ask Emily to leave. She was hesitant at first, however, I reminded her of the rules of the place, and in no way or form did she contact me to ask if it would be okay to bring Kit with her. She's tried to defend herself saying he's young, but her boyfriend, who's also the father, could have stayed with Kit since he finishes work at four. I've also told Emily how disappointed I was with what she did, as she ruined the dinner by bringing Kit in the place not made for kids. Emily didn't like that and left. The rest of the dinner went okay-ish, but I could feel the tension. Later that night, my mom and my aunt, aunt wasn't present as she lives quite far away and can't really travel, both called me to tell me that what I did was a jerk move, and Emily's now upset and I need to apologize. Jessie's upset too, but because she felt like everyone paid attention to Kit and were trying to calm him down, instead of congratulating us or discussing the wedding, what the dinner was about. So, am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk. I think this is a situation where, as a parent with a newborn kid, you need to make sure that wherever it is you're going is child-friendly. Because not every place is going to be accommodating for a six-month-old child, especially not a Michelin star restaurant. Our next story is from Confident History 14. Am I the jerk for wanting to serve my ex papers for full custody and child support for my daughter now that he has a new baby? I, 31-year-old female, have a wonderful 7-year-old daughter I would go to the moon and back for and have been supporting her as a single parent. My ex, 31-year-old male, hasn't really been in her life since we split when she was two and a half. He hasn't paid child support for the last four years and has sporadically visited her at his parents' home when she visits. He says he'll visit her while hyping her up and then not show up only to give BS excuses on why he never showed up, leaving her devastated and upset that he didn't want to spend time with her. He's blamed me for everything under the sun, which I can prove to not be true. For example, he blames me for not calling him so he can video chat with her on my days off when he doesn't even attempt to try in the first place on his days off. He even stated he couldn't pay child support because he was rebuilding his car. My ex has seen multiple girls in the past four years, but has been seeing his current girlfriend for about a year at this point, and she has a three-year-old daughter. He shunted our daughter to be his girlfriend's daughter's father, doing father-daughter activities like going to the pumpkin patch, holidays, and spending time with a three-year-old. He forgot his own daughter's birthday for two years in a row, and possibly for a third time this year. His family and I heard a rumor that the girlfriend was pregnant three or four months ago, his parents wanted to be in the baby's life, and I was ecstatic that my daughter would have a half-sibling, since I don't want more kids. He vehemently denied that she was pregnant, and we left the subject alone. Well, about 10 minutes before I started my shift, I was told and shown that my ex-girlfriend had their baby girl that morning. I was livid. He had lied to all of us that the baby was coming and severed whatever trust we had with him left. I started looking at family attorneys in my city because I know this will get messy. He wants parental rights without having to lift a finger or pay child support. I want full custody since our daughter lives with me full time. Before people ask, no, he's not in our daughter's life unless he wants the others to see he's being a good dad. The last time he visited her, she didn't recognize him at all. Yes, I've filed for child support several times in the past, only for them to die in court because he didn't want to sign the paperwork. I'm at my wit's end with him. 
I vented to a close couple of friends and close co-workers about this, and the majority are saying that I'm the jerk because I should be excited for the new baby, and that with the new baby he won't have the funds for child support. Am I the jerk if I go through with getting a family attorney and serving him papers while he's caring for a newborn? I think OP's not the jerk because it's pretty clear that this guy has just all but settled on abandoning them. I think it's actually pretty obvious that this guy is slowly growing the distance between them before hopefully he can just run off into the sunset with a new baby and new life. As hopeful as OP is, I don't think there was ever going to be a future where OP's kid plays with their half-sibling because the dad won't engage in any of it. Definitely get that child support. Our next story is from I Love Waffle Fries 1225 Would I be the jerk for wanting immodest bridesmaid dresses for my wedding? I, 20-year-old female, am getting married next summer. I grew up in a very religious household, but was able to flee the toxicity as I like to say. The rest of my family are all still very active members in that church. I asked my two sisters, 22 and 17, to be my bridesmaids. Within said religion, once you reach a certain age, you're eligible to make extra promises and one of those promises is that you'll remain chaste. No premarital sex, wear modest clothing, etc. You're then given the magical underwear to wear at all times. They essentially resemble knee-length shorts and a cap sleeve t-shirt but in underwear type material. Earlier today, we went shopping for bridesmaid dresses. The vision I have for my wedding is simple, but particular. I would prefer my bridesmaids to wear the same dress, spaghetti straps, knee length, flowy, semi-exposed back and chest. My mom and older sister, during the entirety of this appointment, sat there and told me that I needed to be accommodating towards her religious needs with finding a dress for her that completely covers her underwear. Normally, I wouldn't have a problem with this, but this is for my wedding. I'll wear what she wants for hers, so I don't get why it's such a big deal for mine. My mom tried to say that it was the same as a Muslim woman wanting to accommodate for her hijab. Please correct me if I use the wrong terminology. Or a member of Jewish faith wearing a yarmulke. Again, please correct me if needed. I don't know if maybe it's because I'm looking at it all with poop-colored glasses, but I don't think it's the same thing. They're just underwear to me, and people have to wear underwear to accommodate different clothing all the time. So why is this any different? Anyways, part of me just wants to rescind my invitation for her to be in the bridal party, since it's already caused so much drama. But I know that it'll only cause more if I do. I'd be risking my younger sister pulling out as a bridesmaid, and I would be risking losing the financial help my parents have offered, that I'm incredibly grateful for. I don't want her to be uncomfortable, but I also want my wedding to look and be a certain way. So, am I the jerk for not choosing a dress that accommodates her? I think OP is the jerk, and I think the distinction that they're failing to understand here is that although they, I guess they would say, escaped this religion, their sisters still practice it. And while it might just be underwear to you, to them, it actually really means something. And frankly, to look at them in the face and try to argue that you don't have to accommodate for them at all is actually pretty insulting. So I wouldn't blame any of them for being kind of outraged over this. It might not be your choice to follow that religion or even think it's practical, but they do. And I think the least you can do is show them respect towards that, especially if it's a modesty thing. Our next story is from Frosty Foundation 130. Am I the jerk for leaving my friend group chat after being left out at a wedding? I, 23-year-old female, am being called petty and immature for trying to leave my friend's group chat after my feelings were hurt. I have a very large friend group that hangs out all together a couple of times a year. We have a large group chat which we use regularly to share memories and photos. As I mentioned, it's a very large group, about 18 people. As such, obviously we aren't all equally close. Some of the connections between people in the group is mainly mutual friends. However, we do all generally go to the same parties. Well, one of the people in this group was getting married, and although we've known each other for a couple of years now, I'm not close friends with her. I suspected I wouldn't get an invite to her wedding because she said it was more of a low-key event, and I knew she didn't have a lot to spend on it. When it came time to send out her invitations, I received a call from one of our mutual friends, whom we're both close with. My friend wanted to tell me that the bride felt really awful about it, but that she couldn't invite me to the wedding because of limited space. I immediately reached out to her and let her know that there were no hard feelings and that weddings were stressful enough. 
I did feel a little bad about not being invited, but I also assumed that there were other people in our friend group receiving similar calls. Well, as it turned out, I was completely wrong. This weekend, my group chat blew up with pictures from the wedding, and while I was looking through them, I realized that I had been the only one who didn't receive an invite. What was worse is that everyone who had a significant other had gotten a plus one. Even my friend who had started dating his girlfriend after I was told they couldn't invite me. I was so embarrassed. I've been very insecure about friendships the majority of my life because I've had multiple people upgrade to someone more popular than me. So I suppose because of this, I got upset and decided I didn't want to be a part of the entire group anymore and I left the group chat. That's when my friends started reaching out to me asking why I had left. Some of them were understanding, but my best friend told me that it looks really bratty and petty. Now I'm feeling bad because I really didn't want to put a damper on their wedding joy, but being excluded really hurts my feelings. So now I'm worrying. Am I in the wrong? I don't think OP's in the wrong here because I don't understand how they can have all these plus one invitations and then somehow not be able to invite OP to the party. I just don't get it. Obviously, how is that going to make anybody feel in this friend group? Everybody else gets invited and their significant others and you're the one odd man out? I mean, that kind of puts the writing on the wall, right? They clearly don't value you like they do everybody else in that group. Not only that, 16 out of 17 people were invited and not any of the other 15 stood up for you or said that you should be invited too? If that isn't even more writing on the wall, I don't know what is. This next story is from dobig2584. Am I the jerk for not going on what was meant to be my birthday trip since my sister went? I'm 16 year old female and was meant to be doing this for my 17th birthday. Just a little early since my birthday is November and we were meant to go for 10 days. My parents had said that it would be just me and them and it was meant to be the first vacation I could enjoy since my sister's always been a problem. She's 14 and she's had mental health problems since she was very young and it comes out in really disruptive ways. She acts out. She gets into a lot of trouble. She doesn't like being around people. She'll curse and scream and cause a scene everywhere. Any vacation we've done has been spoiled by this. And I know it's not entirely her fault, but I never enjoy them. I always hate going. So when my parents said they wanted to give me an experience instead of a physical gift for my birthday, I told them I didn't want her there. She was meant to stay with our aunt who has training as a psych nurse and is the only person outside my parents who can handle her. But then my sister found out about it and told our parents she felt bad. So a week before we were meant to go, they told me she was also coming. And that is when I said I would not be going that they didn't get to ruin what was meant to be my birthday present by having her there. My parents asked me what they were supposed to do, and I told them they were meant to give me one thing that she can't spoil or ruin. My sister was really bad leading up to it too, and I ended up staying with my grandparents while she went. And they were miserable coming back, which made me even more glad I didn't go. My sister told me it was meant to be for me, and I had to walk away because otherwise I would have told her to her face that I didn't want her ruining it for me. My parents told me I should have still gone, that I made them feel crappy, made them feel guilty. I said good. They told me I should be more understanding. I said I was, but that if I can't enjoy my own birthday treat without it being ruined, then it's not worth it for me. I told them I'm perfectly aware that she's not totally in control and that she's got many issues all diagnosed but that I can't overlook how things get ruined when she's there or how my birthday trip became all about her darn feelings when mine have been hurt countless times. My parents and I have tension there since. My sister also heard everything we said and she ended up being taken to the hospital by the police as a result. Am I the jerk? This is a painful one, but I think OP's not the jerk here because I think it's valid that disabilities or issues or whatever aside, OP deserves to have things that are meant for them, solely for them that they can enjoy. Especially in a situation like this where they set up everything for OP to enjoy, finally we're going to have that thing and then drop the bombshell back on them a week before it happens. That's not fair to anybody, and I think it's justifiable how OP feels. This next story is from Glittering Ball 2429 Am I the jerk for calling the cops because no one picked up the kid I was babysitting? 
My boyfriend and I took his ex's kid for a last minute overnight stay since the father of the kid cancelled on her. She had plans with her friends for the night and we weren't busy so we took him overnight when the baby daddy bailed on her. We told her we had brunch reservations the next morning at 11 and while we were happy to help, she needed to pick him up by 9am. She knew this and agreed when she dropped him off. Well, the next morning it's 9am and she isn't here yet. We text and call her with no answer. 10am rolls around and we try calling her again. She picks up in a very groggy voice and tells us she's got the worst hangover and she won't be picking him up till 2pm. We remind her of our brunch reservations and she tells us to take him with us. The kid is 2 years old. It's not enjoyable to take a child this age out to eat. My boyfriend cancels our reservations and gets ready to have this kid until she decides to pick him up. I am furious at this point. This isn't my child, nor my boyfriend's child. I call her and tell her that if she's not here by noon, I would be calling the police to collect her child. She only lives 15 minutes away. She calls me a witch. I then told her she had 30 minutes to come get him. I waited an hour and there was zero sign of her. We couldn't drop the child off to her since she lives in an apartment complex that you need to have access to to get in. So I called the cops and told them I was babysitting and I don't know where his parents are. They were supposed to be here two hours ago. They basically treated it as they would a lost child. They took him down to the station. Little Miss finally rolls up at 3pm and gets belligerent when she discovers I had actually called the cops and gave her child to them. She calls me all sorts of wonderful names and storms down to the police station. Not the jerk. OP and their partner were trying to do something nice for these people and they took way too much advantage. They agreed and understood that they wanted them picked up at 9am. They blew right through that, didn't care, called you a witch. They deserved every little bit of it. I feel bad for the kid, the kid needs better parents. Honestly, I hope the police keep a record of that. This next story is from Screen Nice 4263 Would I be the jerk if I asked my cousin to use my breast milk when her baby's born? So, I've been debating on this question for the last week and saw another post on here to do with breast milk and it made me decide that this might be a good place to get feedback on if this would make me a jerk to ask this, even though it's wildly different situations. I recently lost my 9 week old daughter to SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, and it's been a traumatic time for me, I won't lie. My cousins do any day now with their own baby. A girl too. My cousin had a double mastectomy to combat cancer four years ago, and this girl is conceived from an embryo she and her husband had frozen before she began treatment. This does however mean she won't be able to nurse and there is a formula shortage right now. I'm still producing milk and it seems a waste to dispose of it. My cousin and I grew up like sisters and had plans for our children to grow up similarly. She even planned the implantation of the embryo around when I was trying to fall pregnant to ensure their ages were close. I want to offer my milk to my cousin for her baby as someone should get use of it and I love my cousin and her future baby. To be clear, as I know some people will misunderstand, I don't want to nurse her baby at my breast. I would pump the milk as I'm doing right now anyway and drop it around at her house. I have no health issues or anything that would make this milk problematic for her baby. My issue is I wonder if asking this would be insensitive and a reminder of my loss and also her inability to nurse her child. I've not been in the best of places because of my grief and I'm aware enough to know that perhaps this is making me unable to judge if this would be a step too far or inappropriate. Would this be out of line to offer? I'd not push if she said no of course. I actually think this is a very reasonable thing to offer. There's no hiding the fact that the best thing for a newborn baby is actual breast milk. And you have supply, they have demand, and OP said they're really close, so I don't see why it would be an issue. Frankly, I think if the cousin was ever offended by this, it would be a really personal thing that is kind of them lashing out unnecessarily and not because that would be an appropriate reaction. Honestly, I think it's amazing that OP would offer. And our final story of the day is from theory number 96. Am I the jerk for refusing to change bikinis? I'll start by saying that where I live, not the US, it's rather hot at the moment and it's pool party season. My grandparents own a house with a big pool, and so weekly or bi-weekly, my family gather just to have fun and swim. My grandparents don't mind since they don't really do anything besides offer the house. 
We all cook, buy snacks, get the place ready, and then clean. Two years ago, my sister married their now husband, who happens to be one of my exes. At first, I was horrified because they began to date pretty quickly, but now I don't mind. We don't interact much, never have, so at previous gatherings, we would just be in on our business, not really caring about the other. She's usually with our cousins and our parents, while I'm with our grandparents and some aunts and uncles. Her husband, whom I'll call Mike, is always there of course, but we don't talk to each other, and she's pregnant 26 weeks. Last Sunday, we were getting the garden ready when she came to see me and asked me to change. I was already wearing my bikini with a see-through dress over it. It was a normal one, but I have a bigger chest than her and she was fuming. I asked if I had something or what and she said, no, but I'm pregnant and I don't feel my best. I don't want Mike looking at you. I was confused and looked at Mike who was playing with one of my cousins not really paying attention. I said she didn't really have to worry about Mike, but this made her angrier and told me not to act like we were buddies and go change. I said sorry, no, I won't change. She said I was trying to get her husband's attention and I actually laughed because what the freak. I said if that bothered her so much, she should have thought of that before getting with my ex. My grandpa got in the middle and told us to stop. He told my sister I wasn't changing and he asked me to say sorry for my last comment. I did and she wasn't happy. Later on, my mom came to me with another bikini and told me to go change. But I decided to just go home and it caused my grandpa to scold both my sister and mom for making his house a hostile environment. And now they're both mad at me because I should have just changed. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. This is a family get together. It's a pool party. People are going to be wearing bikinis. Bottom line though, it is never the fault of the person who gets ogled for causing the person who is ogling to do so. If you're that worried about your husband ooing and aahing, well then I guess you're just going to have to sit there the whole time watching them, maybe hand them a blindfold. Am I the jerk for being honest with my son that I'm not proud of him? My wife Nina and I became pregnant with our son Jason when we were both 20. We'll admit it was an unplanned pregnancy, but we loved our son and kept him. We did our best to raise Jason to be kind, respectful, and treat others well, and we thought we succeeded. Jason worked hard to attend an elite university. Jason and his first wife Sarah had a daughter Simone. Unfortunately, Sarah passed in a car accident before Simone's third birthday. Jason raised Simone until Simone was four. At that time, he met his second wife and moved two hours away. Simone lives with us. Jason visits once every two months, at best. He and his wife would stay for the day, buy Simone a present, then Jason would say it's time to leave. Nina and I suspect he only visits and buys Simone the present because his wife makes him. His wife, Iris, is a lovely lady. She insists that Simone should move in with them or they should move closer to us because she wants to be Simone's stepmom and spend time with her. But Jason shoots the idea down because he says Simone moving in or them moving would hurt his career. And it's best Simone stay with Nina and me. Simone is 11 now and she adores Jason. She makes drawings and cards for him, constantly bakes treats to send to him. It's devastating for her because her daddy is her hero and he doesn't want to spend time with her. Her birthday was in July and she cried when Jason didn't call her to wish her a happy birthday. Iris tried lying to Simone to make her feel better that the phone lines went down and Jason didn't forget, but Simone didn't believe her. Simone's at summer camp all this week, and Jason invited us to a party to celebrate receiving a promotion. During the party, Jason told me about how much more money he makes with this promotion and his job title, and he asked, You should be proud, old man. Job title and an elite university alumni. I sighed and told Jason that I honestly have not been proud of him as of late. He may have a well-paying job, but he treats his own beautiful daughter as if she doesn't matter. Simone is his own little girl. She loves him so much and he doesn't even seem to care. Nina came back with drinks and Jason told her what I said. Nina told him that she agreed with me and he doesn't treat Simone right. Most of the family says that I and Nina were in the wrong to tell Jason I wasn't proud of him. They said I should know how much that statement hurts at any age because I was never good enough in my own father's eyes. They said that Jason is probably focusing on stabilizing his career and Simone can move in with him after. They also said Jason's own promotional party was not the time or place to call him out. 
and I could have just congratulated Jason on working hard and saved the drama for another day. I feel what I said needed to be said, but most of the family is disagreeing with Nina and me. Am I the jerk? The truth hurts sometimes, and I think OP's not the jerk here. Would you guys agree when I say, as much as Jason wants to deflect things here, or maybe disagree with their own parents, the fact is, Jason isn't even doing the bare minimum of maintaining a relationship with Simone? That forgetting to call on your own child's birthday is enough to be not proud of somebody? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from OKAntelope4554. Am I the jerk for having my kids wear tie-dye when they're with their dad? I, 30-year-old female, my ex-husband, 31-year-old male, got divorced five years ago. During our divorce, we owned an old single-wide mobile home, 1973, on a large piece of land that's zoned for a trailer park. He wanted the new truck in our savings. I wanted the old trailer and the land. My ex and I have two girls, eight and seven. Since my divorce, I slowly started buying old single wides and restoring them, turning it into a business. I love it. My girls go to their dad's and AP apartment every other weekend. I started noticing their clothes, electronics, toys were not coming home. At first, I thought their dad was just keeping a few outfits there for them. However, my eight-year-old got upset when she was packing. I asked her what was wrong. She told me her dad takes her clothes and sells them online that she doesn't want to take her favorite shirt over there. I immediately called my ex. I asked her to return our daughter's clothes. Not wanting to throw my daughter under the bus, I blamed it on them not having enough for school. He played dumb. He said he got rid of the clothes that were too small. I pointed out that the jeans our seven-year-old had were brand new. He then said it was only fair that he got some cash because he owned the trailer and land. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this good. I was pissed. I took my daughters down to the dollar store and bought cheap shirts. To a thrift store and bought cheap shorts. We had a girls tie-dye night, hot pink everything. Each made five shirts and five bottoms. I let our girls design and decorate them. My girls loved it. The following week, X sends the girls home. I can tell he's mad, but he didn't say anything. The clothes were not returned. No fear, I knew this would be an issue. We made extras. When the girls went back, they were wearing tie-dye. They were there with their dad for an hour before he called and demanded different clothes. I kindly told him that our daughters love those clothes. They really, really love tie-dye. X got even angrier and said his parents have a major family party and the girls can't wear pink tie-dye. I told him that he should go buy other clothes if he didn't want them to wear it. He called me a jerk for being petty. Am I the jerk? Absolutely not the jerk. This dude is ridiculous for trying to sell their kids stuff and then expecting you to continue to supply them with clothing on their kids and in their kids' suitcases for them to turn around and sell? What did this guy even expect to happen here? Of course you're going to send your kids over wearing the cheapest, simplest clothes. And let's simplify this to what it really is. The ex-husband might say, oh, well, I'm just taking back some of the money I gave you, but they're really stealing from the kids because the kids like those clothes and the clothes were always theirs and meant for them. So everything you take away isn't from your ex, it's from your own children. Our next story is from Princess Azula. Am I the jerk for still having my daughter's first birthday party? Okay, here's the background. My 24-year-old female, friend, 24-year-old female, and I gave birth on the same day. Her due date was supposed to be two months later, but her baby came early. We were both so excited. Unfortunately, six months ago, her baby passed on. I can't begin to imagine her pain. I've tried to be there for her as best as I could. She just wants to be left alone most of the time, which I understand. Now onto the issue. My daughter's birthday is coming up in September, and we plan to invite close friends and family to her birthday party. I texted her before invites were sent out saying, I wanted to let you know my daughter's birthday's on said date, and I just wanted to let you know you're invited, no pressure on you to come at all. She texted me back saying, oh no thanks, I'll be at my daughter's grave that day. You know, the one that will never have a first birthday? Freak off. She told our other friends how pissed she is at me for even inviting her, and that it's awful that I'm still celebrating this day and they kind of see her side, saying I could have been more sensitive. My husband doesn't think I did anything wrong and it's just grief talking. 
Am I the jerk for inviting her? I think OP is not the jerk here. And I think all of those friends that say, oh, well, we kind of see her side are saying that solely out of pity points. It might be rude of me to say, but like, I feel like they're just saying it just to be nice. They see their side because they don't want to upset them. And then they say, well, you could have been more sensitive, OP, because they don't want to upset them. It's awful, it sucks, and it's horrible that they have to grieve, but that doesn't place an obligation on you to stop you or your baby's lives. And what was the alternative to? Don't invite them? How does that look? Our next story is from throwaway10876543. Am I the jerk for telling my ex-wife's new partner that she's not the parent of our unborn child and has no say in what his name will be? My ex-wife, female 28, and I, male 28, split up a few months ago due to her coming out as a lesbian. The split was quite amicable and we've remained quite good friends. While she did cheat on me during the relationship, I understand that it was due to her sexuality. She came from a very conservative Christian household who have cut her off now that she's come out. Marrying me was a way of placating her family, I suppose. The issue now arising is the fact that she's pregnant with our child. During our marriage, we agreed that if we had a son, we would name him after both of our grandfathers, as they were both very important people in our lives. Samuel Jacob last name. An issue has been raised by her new partner, female 27, over the name. Now, I will fully admit that her new partner and I have never really got along. She was a friend of a friend before she got together with my ex, and we just never saw eye to eye. But we both have tried to be cordial for the sake of my ex. While we recently were discussing the name of our child, the partner outright refused to accept that we were going to name the child Samuel. She had an ex named Samantha who was now abusive towards her and said that she could not stand to have her child share the name with her ex. Now, I fully understand that this woman will inevitably be a part of my son's life, but I explained to her the meaning behind why we were naming him Samuel and how important it was to me. My ex also backed me up, saying how this was decided long before she was in the picture. And while she was sorry that the name offended her, she would leave the decision to me. Her partner proceeded to get very angry again, insisting that her child would not have that name. This sent me over the edge. I asked her if I got her pregnant. She of course said no. I asked if she somehow magically got my ex pregnant. Again, she said no. I then told her that since she was not the parent of this child, that my ex and I will give our child the name we want regardless of her opinion. The partner proceeded to go ballistic at me, calling me homophobic for not giving her any input and forcing her into the situation and stormed out of the room. My ex was also not happy with me but still agreed that I will have the final say in the naming of our child. This was a few days ago and I haven't spoken to either of them since. I've asked around a few of my friends and have gotten a mixed response when I asked if I was wrong. Personally, I'm of the opinion that OP is not the jerk, and also I fail to see how this would be some kind of homophobic issue. This is OP and their ex-wife's kid that they're having, and they agreed that this name was already settled on well in advance before this person was in the picture, and it's not even their own legal kid. They're not even going to be able to adopt this kid. Like, I'm sorry, but despite being in their lives, probably, they don't have any claim to choose what name they have. Honestly, people resorting to the, oh, you're homophobic, as a way of trying to become a victim in a lot of different situations that aren't even related to sexuality, people like that only stand to hurt the continued progress that LGBT people are having. Our next story is from Throwaway HHHJ. Would I be the jerk if I sell my niece's electronics? My niece, 16, lives with me since her parents passed away about a year ago. She knows how to drive, but her driving isn't very good. She's only allowed to drive my car when I'm with her to help her learn more. The past few nights, she's been asking me to let her drive, but I was too busy. Last night, she went out of my home with my car and slightly hit the wall. I was and still am very angry because my car is new and very expensive. I grabbed all of her electronics and told her I'm going to sell them and use the money to fix my car. She cried and begged me not to because her dad bought them for her. She promised to pay for it all if I don't sell them, but I don't see that happening because she doesn't have a job. I might be the jerk because I don't need the money and can pay for it myself. 
but I want to do this to teach her a lesson. My wife says I'm a jerk though, so I don't know. I think OP needs to be very careful here because they could do some serious damage. There's no denying the fact that their parents passed away only about a year ago and those parents definitely bought her those things. I would say maybe they're not the jerk if there was no sentimental issue at hand. But if you take away things that have sentimental value, even if it's just because the parents recently-ish bought it for them, then yeah, I think you're a jerk big time. Kids do make mistakes. It was a costly one, but if anything, try to just make this a learning lesson and maybe try to get your money out of them in a more hands-on way with like chores, grounding, just basically something that's not going to possibly damage their psyche. Our next story is from It's a Throwaway. Am I the jerk for telling my wife our daughter is more important than she is? Our daughter is turning 18 in October. She's a great kid, always pulled straight A's, never in any type of trouble and she's very respectful. My wife recently decided to have a talk with her about adult responsibilities. I had no knowledge of this conversation until my daughter came to me crying because she was scared about living on her own. I was confused at first. Then she told me her mother said that she needs to start looking for a job because she'll be expected to get her own place after her birthday. I was appalled because we never discussed throwing her out at 18. When I confronted my wife, she said our daughter wasn't a child anymore and needed our push to become an adult. I told her I was really baffled that she would exclude me from such a serious decision and conversation. I asked my wife how she expects our kid to make it on minimum wage especially considering the rent is out of control in our area. She then informs me that she had planned for us to pay half her rent until she was 20. I asked her why she wanted our kid gone so bad. As our argument intensified, I believe she slipped by, saying she needed the space, her bedroom, for her art studio. I couldn't believe it. I told my wife if her hobby was more important than our daughter, she should be the one looking to rent. However, she took that as me saying move out, but that's not how I meant it. I was implying for her to rent more space for her studio and to leave our daughter alone. She didn't believe that's what I actually meant. She then gave me the silent treatment for three days. Our daughter, however, was still upset as she processed her mother wanting her out. She realized moving into a rental meant that she had to leave her two cats behind. She's had these cats since she was a young child. That alone devastated her. She told me, I don't want to turn 18. I don't want to celebrate my birthday. I picked the argument back up with my wife at that point. I said, our daughter isn't moving out until she decides on her own terms because she is more important than you or your hobby. She looked stunned and maybe in the heat of the moment I didn't choose my words wisely. I couldn't bear to see our daughter so upset any longer. I don't want her struggling to make ends meet and not being able to follow her dreams. The last thing I want is for her to feel rushed. As far as my wife goes, she's not talking to me at all, and she's been cold towards our daughter. I think OP's not the jerk, and I think OP has a modern and reasonable mindset. I think it's great if you have hobbies, but not if you gotta kick your own kid out of the house right away when they turn 18 to do so. If you had kids, or if you do currently have kids, Would there ever be an age where you would actually kick them out straight up? Or as long as they have their head on straight and they're not doing anything inappropriate, would you be okay with having them around until they figure something out, even if that means into their late 20s or even maybe later? I'd like to know what you guys think. Our next story is from Caddis Killies. Am I the jerk for scaring my boyfriend and his brother by going missing when they repeatedly left my friend and I behind on a hike? I had plans with my boyfriend Jack his brother Tyler, and my friend Paula to go hiking last weekend. I had suggested an easier, flatter trail for us to hike, since Paula isn't as experienced of a hiker as the rest of us. I thought the plan was to just hike together and hang out and talk, but the day of, we started at a normal pace and the guys just kept going faster. Paula was lagging behind, kind of out of breath, and I stuck with her. I was irritated because a huge rule of wilderness safety is to stay with your group, because crap can go sideways fast in the back country. They were stopping to wait every mile or so. We never knew where they were because they didn't say, and nobody had cell service. But as soon as we caught up, they would start going at top speed again, leaving us playing catch up non-stop. 
I told Jack that I'd like them to stick with us, and he complained that we were too slow, the trail was too easy, they needed their workout. After the third time they ran off, Paula and I got to this viewpoint before the main peak. So we sat down to take our first breather in hours and vent. She joked that we should stop chasing and let them wonder. I suggested we just hang out at the viewpoint until the guys noticed or found us on the way back down. She pulled out a joint that she'd been planning on sharing at the top of the mountain and we hung out and smoked and ate our lunch. It was an hour and a half before the guys came back. We heard them before we saw them. They were sprinting down the trail yelling our names. I called out, over here, except I was coughing from smoking so it sounded more like, over <coughs> oh, here. The guys came running to the viewpoint and Paula was giggling her butt off at my attempt to yell. I got the giggles from her and the joint we just finished, too. The guys confused our giggling for crying since we were both just kind of wheezing with laughter and were asking what happened. I was like, we're okay, we're just high. Tyler got really mad at us, saying they'd stopped off a half a mile from the summit to wait for us before making the final push. And after we didn't show up for an hour, they decided to turn back to look for us instead of summiting. And he was furious that we just stopped to get high without telling them. I was like, I thought we split up. Like, y'all were off doing your own thing all day. And my boyfriend raised his voice at me, telling me that you don't split up a group without communication. At that, Paula and I just got the giggles again. Like, no crap. It was just funny how he was saying the same thing I'd been saying all day. For the rest of the hike, the guys were angry with us because we ruined their summit, making them turn back just because we didn't even try to keep up. Am I the jerk for going missing on a hike? Absolutely not, and honestly, I'm glad a situation like this turned out to be a good memory. Who invites somebody out on a hike or takes somebody out on a hike that clearly isn't as experienced a hiker and doesn't compensate at all for them? Just expects them to slowly follow you from, I don't know, a mile behind. This next story is from Sexy Cupcake 0218 Am I the jerk for being annoyed a boyfriend is home on my day off? Title's a bit weird, let me explain. So, my boyfriend and I both work the day shift, so we're both home after 6pm. We have our days off set up so that he's off Saturday and Sundays, and I'm off Sundays and Mondays. We each get one day off to ourselves to just be alone and do our own thing, and then one day off together to do whatever we want as well. My boyfriend and I have fairly different hobbies. We split doing his and me things together throughout the week. He's really into fitness and working out and always being active. I'm a pretty strong gamer and enjoy SFX and more indoor and less sweaty things. So we stayed up stupid late last night and called into work this morning. 9 out of 10 times I wouldn't care, but it's Monday. It's my only day to myself. And he's constantly bugging me to go work out with him or go on a hike or just generally to be active because he's bored. Again, 9 out of 10 times it wouldn't matter and I would spend a few hours doing whatever he wanted. I need this day to just be quiet and dark and me time. I'm 100% on the opposite end of a social person. I just want my one day to be alone, to recuperate for the week. I look forward to this one day the entire week. I'm definitely annoyed and definitely showing it, even though I'm trying not to. I've tried explaining this, I've tried being nice and just telling him I need some more me time, and he's just not listening. I pretty much snapped and told him to just leave me the freak alone for a bit, and now he's sulking in the living room. Am I the jerk? I think OP is not the jerk because I think it's important to recognize that not everybody is as socially outgoing. Personally, I think I'm right in line with OP here. As far as I really do value my time off, I'm not a very social person at all, and me being alone often is how I just recuperate. I don't blame OP because I imagine it can feel suffocating to not just have that time off. Our next story is from Life Thermometer. Am I the jerk for refusing to give a kid a cupcake with a candle and seeing happy birthday to him? I know it sounds bad, but please hear me out. Background, I have two boys that are two years apart, four and six. The six-year-old's birthday party was last weekend. The four-year-old, 
well, he's turning four, will have his birthday party in a couple of weeks. I've always had a shared party since the birthdays are so close, but the older brother wanted a party just for him. Okay, the story, we invited a few family members and some friends, nothing too big. There was a total of 12 kids ranging from a baby to an eight-year-old. We all had a good time and everyone was happy. 10 seconds after we sang happy birthday and my son blew his candles, a friend, she's my husband's friend's wife, asked for a cupcake and a candle and proceeded to say that now we're singing for her almost three-year-old. I honestly thought it was a joke. It wasn't his birthday and even if it was, that's weird. She said they started a tradition that every time they go to a party, he gets to blow the candles too and gets a happy birthday song sang to him too. I was so taken aback that I said we're only celebrating my son's special day, so we're not singing happy birthday to her kid. Her kid cried, threw a tantrum, and they left after that. Some family told me I was rude on refusing. Was I? I now feel bad, but this is the reason my kid wanted a solo party. Was I wrong? I don't think OP was the jerk here, because to me it sounds like those other parents were really catering to their kid, feeling the need to be special, really feeding the child's me, me, me type behavior, and I'm worried how that kid's gonna grow up. Our next story is from AITA123 Throw. Am I the jerk for calling my brother an inconsiderate, insecure, pompous jerk? My brother and I are not very close. I can tolerate him if need be, but I think he struggles in many social situations. He can't seem to read basic social cues and makes many inappropriate comments and jokes. He has strong opinions about everything, jumps to unreasonable conclusions, and never lets things go. My wife and his wife have been friends for years. My wife doesn't like my brother much, but she's very polite and courteous towards him for the sake of my sister-in-law. My wife and I lost our three-year-old son about a year ago. His death was sudden, and there's not a day that goes by where I don't grieve him. There will never come a day, hour, minute, or second I'll stop loving or thinking about my son. In my family, talking about a dead child makes people uncomfortable and is almost treated as taboo. I'm not too fond of this culture, and I've been candid about going to therapy, counseling sessions, support groups, etc. My wife and I started going to marriage therapy after the loss of our son. My family believes that we're going to couples counseling because our marriage is failing or my wife isn't satisfying me enough. This could not be further from the truth, and I think it's a bit disgusting and ridiculous. My sister-in-law invited my wife and I for a nice dinner at their place to celebrate my wife's birthday. Most of my family would be there, and she promised us no drama and or unnecessary comments. We got there, and it was nice at first. Everyone was being respectful, and I was having fun. Near the end, a few people gave my wife small gifts. We were planning to open them at home and react privately, but my brother was very adamant about seeing my wife's reaction to his gift. He was so sure that he had the best gift and wanted my wife to open his gift in front of everyone. Nothing could have prepared me for his present. He gave her a baby's romper meant for a newborn boy and an expensive set of lingerie. I was so shocked. When she looked at him, he laughed and said that it was to motivate her to bring a spark back into the marriage. Everyone was speechless until my wife politely thanked everyone for coming and then left, leaving my brother's gift. I told my brother that the gift was wrong and incredibly inappropriate. He started to get defensive and very aggressive, so in anger, I called him an inconsiderate, insecure, pompous jerk. My sister-in-law, as well as a few other family members, told me that even if the gift was in bad taste, I shouldn't have called him such names and provoked him. I may be the jerk for the unnecessary name calling. I think OP's not the jerk, and considering everything that went on, I think OP was very well said. Would you guys agree with me when I say that OP kept better composure than I think most people would? I think that was a very reasonable and honestly more subdued reaction than some people would have. And our final story of the day is from Bopalob01. Am I the jerk for refusing to invite a childhood friend to my birthday? My birthday's in a few weeks. My mom and I went out for Bloody Marys yesterday and ran into someone she used to be friends with. I'll call her Wendy. 
Wendy has a daughter, Linny, and when I was a kid, I was forced to be friends with Linny. Apparently, we're the same age, but she always acted babyish, which kind of annoyed me. When I was like 12-ish, I stopped going when my mom would do stuff with them. Well, she stopped dragging me along. Wendy started going on and on about how she can't believe how her daughter and I are both grown now. My mom said, yeah, Opie's birthday's coming up and I just can't believe how old she is. Wendy asked if I was doing anything for my birthday. I assumed she was just making conversation, so I said meeting with some friends and going to different bars. Then she said, well, Lenny just moved back to town and is looking to meet people. Maybe she can meet up with you on your birthday. I just said, eh, I'm not sure where we'll be and when, so... She said, then give me your number and I'll give it to Lenny so she can call or text you to see where you are. I said, eh, nah, that's okay, maybe some other time really hoping that she would take a hint. She said, no, no, this is perfect. Meet up with an old friend and meet new people? Just give me your number. I sort of sighed and said, look, I don't really want her to go. When we were kids, I was forced to hang out with her. I don't consider her a childhood friend. Wendy looked at my mom and my mom said, you aren't really forced, just encouraged. Wendy said, sorry. I was just trying to help you guys reconnect. Linny doesn't have many people to hang out with since all her old friends moved on. Have a good birthday. Then walked away. My mom said I was unnecessarily rude and should have just given her my number and not answered her call or text if I didn't want Linny there. I feel like I was trying to be nice about it and she didn't get it. So I had to be blunt. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here, but if I was in OP's shoes, I'd also still just kind of feel bad about it. I would be left with both A, I'm kind of glad she's not coming, but also B, oh, I kind of feel bad for disappointing them. But no means no. That said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another Am I the Jerk here story that was way crazier than any of the stories you heard in this video, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.